Productions. Due to suggestive adult themes and dialogue, this podcast is intended for adults. In other words, the truth is ugly, so we get ugly right along with it. Everything we say is out of love for ourselves, our people, and our community. Sincerely, the Green Route Podcast. So, y'all, I have my incredible, amazing, just beautiful, gorgeous, fly as the fuck friend um, with me. So, we actually met. Uh, at AT and T, um, I don't even. I, I think I may have been in my first job with AT and T when I met you um, at the center up in Richardson. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I met her through another great friend of mine who will be on the show. Crazy enough, soon enough. I can't wait. Um, yeah, that's gonna be fun. And so because his driving humor is so hilarious. <laughs> he really, he really <laughs> is hilarious. He just he sneaks it in there. He sneaks it in there. So we met y'all, and um, really it was you know I knew Latoya through excuse me, Marve, And then Latoya and I started to develop our own relationship um, when I went to headquarters downtown. And since then, like, you know, we just started hanging out outside of work and genuinely became friends. Um, Latoya is everything media, everything fashion, um, journalism, um, entertainment. So long story short, like, look for this lady. You know what I mean? Like, I'm waiting for her to leave the corporate job so she can just go on and be a media mogul. That might be happening uh, soon. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, the checks are right. If the checks come correct, why not? So, yeah. So, she is um, not only in marketing and media for AT&T, but also the vice president, the newly minted vice president. You should show the plaque now. This is a great time to show the plaque. But let me put the camera on you. The newly minted vice president of Dallas Weekly, y'all, um, as of about a month ago now. Yes. She was the managing editor and now she is the vice president. And that is an attestment, a, a, like an attestation to her hard work, um, to how she just pours into people, into the community, um, into everyone she touches. So I'm so excited to have her with me. She is also a fashion model. <laughs> Uh, stylist, like you can tell by the fit, like details are everything. <laughs> details are everything. Details matter. I'm saying, I'm saying accessorize, how accessorize. So, so yeah. And, and the, the mother of an incredibly talented daughter who I promise you we are going to see on TV or here on the radio or something when that baby decides which path she, she wants, wants to take with her hey, talent. Jayla, she yeah, she's absolutely incredible. So um yeah, welcome Latoya Henry, y'all. Like, Listen, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I'm such a fan. No. I love the space. The Aww. space is uh, is amazing. The drinks <laughs> are flowing. Liquor. And it's super good. Um and I just I love what you're doing. I love your heartbeat. I love your passion. Thank you. I love that you're consistent. People think that, you know, you have to have a large following to do things like this. Yeah. You don't have to have a plan. Yeah. You hit go, you hit live. Yeah. And you flow. That's right. You stay consistent. And that's what I admire about you is that you have been consistent through and through. Thank you. And I know you're going to just go far and I'm excited to just watch you grow Thank and you. just develop more. So I'm super excited to be here. Listen, Melda <laughs> sent me a whole little... A rundown. A little listen, rundown. And I didn't look at nothing. So listen, <laughs> don't hold me to nothing I'm going to say, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I love it. I love it. What's crazy, y'all, is, um, yeah, you know, I sent the topics last night because we, we try to stay close to what the news cycle is doing. And then today it was like two or three big stories popped. And I was like, damn, should I add that to the lineup? So actually, I'm going to give a quick rundown of that shit real quick. Did you throw Holly Berry in there? I did not. I did not. Yeah, but we okay. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. So, so we used to do quick hits. You want to do some quick hits real Let's quick? Let's do some quick hits. Let's do some quick hits. All right. Story number one. I'm gonna start the, with the more serious one, and then we can move to Holly Berry's ancient ex husband. Um. So number one. Not sure if y'all heard about this, but I was coming in the house and I just happened to look at the TV, and the headline said that leader of the Wagner Group. So remember the guy who um had helped had hope to stage a coup in Russia. Yes. So the guy who Putin has employed him and his soldiers to help to actually fight the war in Ukraine, the Wagner group. (laughs) Well, apparently he died in a plane crash today. Right outside of Moscow. I want to point that out. Um, Yeah. So the speculations, the speculation is that it was shot down. Right. The plane was shot down by Russian missiles. I also want to put out there. So remember, we've been talking about Niger. Yeah. The coup that was staged there. Niger is literally 
or, and potentially right on the like in the center of destabilization of a lot of um, of a lot of like domestic um, policy within Africa, but also diplomatic relations across, across the world. The world. Because, I mean, think about what's happening with BRICS, South Africa, all of that, right? So, Nigeria has been the center of a lot of contention with countries like America, South Africa, Kenya, all of that. Because to lose that means that, like, there's just a lot of destabilization in the area. Apparently, the military leader who took hostage the democratic, the democratically elected president in Niger had been talking to the Wagner Group about helping them to put the government back in the hands of civilian rule. So as much as I love to believe that Putin was uh, up to this on him, like by himself, there are too many people invested in too many pots that the Wagner group was involved in for this to just, in my opinion, to just be a Putin Russia thing. Just my thoughts. No, I 100% agree with you. And I will say that when I was watching BBC, they actually showed a picture of the leader of the Wagner group and one of the military leads from Niger shaking hands. So I don't think that we are on our own in believing that this could be bigger than just- It's definitely bigger. The potential could. So you coup. definitely got to watch. Yeah. It's going to unfold and the truth is going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, or will it? I think it will. Oh, okay. I, I think it will. Now it might be. A, it's a easy to blame Putin, though. Now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's easy. Yeah. to blame, but years come. The truth is gonna come out. Yeah, people gonna fold. Yeah, yeah. Somebody gonna say something to somebody in a bar, and somebody gonna overhear it, yeah, and like the truth is gonna come out. Yeah, it 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 was pretty bad, y'all. It's it's pretty bad to really think about. This this man and they've been searching for him for a minute. So remember after the whole coup, the the attempted coup thing, and they, they were like, this. right? They was like, <laughs> is he in Belarus? Where is he? And uh, somebody found out his plane was taken. It was his plane. Point that out. This wasn't no like commercial flight. You know what I mean? This was How his many shit. Other people were on the plane. There were ten total on the plane, and all ten are um, Russian media are saying that they are being confirmed deceased. I hate to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So um so yeah, yeah that's our had to come down. I, because of, and when you see the video it's like uh that wasn't no mechanical error. Absolutely not. Um so yeah, it's uh so so that's crazy. So that's that's the number one quick hit. Um the second thing y'all the RNC debate is set to start within the hour. Um I think it's well almost 30 minutes. It's 9 p.m. Eastern time, I believe. Trump will not be there. We knew Trump was like thinking about, okay, how am I going to take viewership from the RNC debate? And he even said, like, I don't need to be there. People know who the fuck I am. Like, y'all need to go get you some publicity, right? Of course. He's not lying. He like, I mean, when you are the clear front runner, I think something like 40 some odd percent or maybe even 50 some odd percent. It's like a waste of time. Are like, yeah, we're still voting for Trump. 91 like, you know, charges. You know my fucking name. 91 charges. And he was like, <laughs> Of course you know me. <laughs> Thanks for giving me the free publicity. Right. So he also got to prepare to turn himself in tomorrow in Atlanta. Are we waiting for this? Are we excited about Atlanta? I think Georgia is going to be a very special case. Um, I think Fonnie Willis has a really strong case. Um, some, of, some of the, like the others are strong, don't get me wrong, but like Fonnie Willis, like she has like the phone call, right? The recordings. How long do you think he's going to stay there? Because I think he got like... Oh, he's 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 gonna be out on two hundred thousand dollars bail tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, he won't actually go into a sale or he's anything. Take a mugshot. I would love to see a mugshot. Put them Chanel bracelets on them. <laughs> that would be cute. <laughs> Trump, give us a mugshot. Cause see, that would give also raise that would raise look. his street cred too. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. If he got a mugshot, that that would be pretty crazy. Because I have a message to our people. Okay, let me with the upcoming election. Mm-hmm. I want Democrats to understand that we as a community, as black people, we're not voting Democrat just because we're black. No, (laughs) we're not. So like this debate that's happening, people really need to tap into it and look at seriously because this election is so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important. You got to vote for the best candidate. 
at this point, we can't look at parties. That's real. <laughs> you you can't look That's at real. parties. It's so important to look at the candidates and you need to. So Republican, we see who's the number one runner. But if you didn't like his presidency when he was running, you need to look at the other Republicans that's out there. That's right. Like, seriously. Yeah. And so Democrats, y'all, they got to come because we're not voting just because you're a Democratic Party. Yeah, no. I like, will write somebody in. Do you understand me? Dem- Democrats. Because I'm not playing with Democrats or Republicans. Democrats have taken our vote for granted for too long. Um, and we... We're educated. Mm-hmm. We got social media that's out here. Yeah, we can we educate want each other. More. Yeah, we're holding more people accountable. Yeah, so they gotta come with it. That's real, and not take us for granted. That's very real. We're not taking the BS no more. That's very we're real. Tired of your shit. Dem- Dem- like Democratic Party. I-, I hope you hear the message. And matter of fact, Kenneth, uh, chop this up and make a clip out of it because a hundred percent. Like we are over having our votes taken for granted over and over again, only for Democrats to be like, oh, thanks for the votes. See you in four years. Yeah. You know and what I mean? And my people don't, I know we don't, it's, people don't like talking about politics, but don't be ashamed to say that you voted for Republican. Mm-hmm. Like, if that's what you did, that's what you did. But no, why? That's my other thing. Yeah. Like, they know the reason why, but they just shame to say it because they feel like other black people are going to shame them for doing that. Stand bold in your decision. No, I, so, so be confident. I, whoever, whoever you vote for, cool with me. My thing is, did you vote for selfish reasons? And and here's the issue I have, honestly, with a lot of black men in particular who voted for Trump is because they were voting against against Hillary. They didn't want a woman in office. It wasn't we. You have literally one of the most qualified people to ever run for president. And Hillary Clinton. Let's be clear about her qualifications are there. Trump's are not. <laughs> they they just were not there. One hundred. That's a whole. That, you got to bring me back so we could talk about because <laughs> the way that the world show up for men and how they don't show up for women. Y'all was mad about pantsuits and emails. Y'all was mad about her it's wearing pants, suits, and emails. It's beyond me. When he's talking about grabbing by the pussy, and you got a mama and sisters and aunties and a grandma. And like, not, so so my thing is this, specifically black men, because you will notice that the Republican Party has begun to cater to you all more and more and more. Like, Stroking y'all be, egos. Yes, be careful. Do understand this. They know that y'all want to be in the demographic of the Supreme. Yeah. The That's problem real. is white supremacy wasn't built for y'all. Mm-hmm. It was never meant to include you. And so the way you talk about. Can you say that again? Never. It was never meant, meant to include you. So the way, you know, the ego is being stroked is like, oh, you know, you can lead, you know, the community and you can, you know, have everything you want. These women, these feminists need to know their places. And it's just like, OK, these women, these feminists have been holding our community down. Since we got here. And we're going to still hold it down when your ass leave. So so if you are voting Republican, I'm I'm not mad at you. I really am not. I would just ask that you have a logical reason that that is wrapped up in more than your ego Mm -hmm. for doing so. If the policy is right, if they can meet the agenda that is good for both you and the community and potentially and, and I guess I should add your family. Yeah. Then sure. I, one of my friends, matter of fact, Nathan, who um who was on the show a couple weeks ago, he said, and I'll never forget, he was like, I don't care what black people vote for. We need to vote for the person that can take our agenda and say, yep, I can meet these things. Whoever can meet the most things on our list, it doesn't matter what and party. You, we can't look at the party. That's it. Like, that's, that's why it. when you say Democrats have taken us for granted for years. Yes. Because that's what we were taught. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like that unspoken well, they, word. They, they speak a lot of like, they speak a lot, a lot of our language when it comes to social issues. So like, oh yeah, we believe in free childcare and, you know, shared services and all. And, and we, and we do believe in that. The problem is they don't deliver any of it. (laughs) The problem is they never deliver, they campaign on it. And, you know, they may give you a crumb and then it's like, well, I got to run again because I couldn't get all that done in four years. And so it really is a way to perpetuate keeping them in a job to make sure I don't fix enough. I fix I fix just enough. I don't fix too much, though. So I can keep myself. I'm giving y'all a little hope. That's it. 
Just just a tad. So so, yeah, I, I genuinely don't care who you vote for. Just really think through the reason you are voting and make sure that it's not wrapped up in your own personal ego mm-hmm. and that it's about the greater good. Because to be honest, like, you know, you always hear that like, oh, black women are the conscious of this country. But we we almost have to be because we've always had to think of the greater. We've always had to think and of we're community. The smartest. Oh. I'll go ahead and say that. I'll say it again in the camera. <laughs> and we're the smartest. Please. No. Yep. Put some respect on our name. Put okay? some respect on my name. Put some. Okay. We are the standard. Black women are the standard. I know y'all think white men are white. Wi- black women. We are the standard. Okay. Please and thank you. I I, I can't disagree. I I can't disagree at all. Okay. You want to talk about um Holly Berry and this husband of hers? So Holly Berry. Yeah. Um, eight thousand dollars <laughs> in an alimony joint. <laughs> custody okay she still has to pay full tuition Mm -hmm. after school extracurricular activities are those her children yes and and i think this is split between two different men wait don't quote me but i what you mean it's eight thousand dollars yeah i think so they're getting four thousand a piece i don't know how the the breakdown (laughs) is but and I know so let's let's get this straight. Eight thousand dollars a year me a month is nothing. But it's the principal. For Halle Berry. Now it's, I'm gonna tell you right now who not freaking paying eight thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some people don't even make eight thousand dollars annually. Thank you. And you talking about a month. So okay, so, so I they, didn't know they, they, the split they between joint, two different men. It's is joint so I don't know for sure for sure. Okay. I was reading. But so hmm. Holly and the husband, the ex-husband, it's like Monday through Wednesday and then Thursday through Sunday type deal. Then they alternate weekends. Mm -hmm. So it's really split. And she still has to pay $8,000 a month. Ain't that a shame? I mean, Mary J, what was that fool asking for? Uh, 10, 20,000, something like that. And them wasn't even her kids. Them was his kids. He need his ass kicked. I just, I'm, I'm, all right, princess. You know what I mean? Like, relax, y'all. If you're a man tuning in, can you put in the comments? Like, we, we would actually really love to know. We would why? love to know. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about this? How, tell us how you feel about this. Mm-hmm. And then tell us why men try to come. And then when you get to a point where you're engaged, you're about to get married, and a woman wants to sign a prenup, the men get in their feelings. But this is why. Because you're not about to take all the money that I worked hard for. Are you serious right now? Would you make a man sign a prenup? Hell yeah. Okay. Do you know my name? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Listen here. My name, ho, wait. <laughs> My net worth. Come on now. I love it. Okay. I love it. I'm speaking that to existence. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm Amen. just saying, like, you're not about to take yeah. nothing from me and mine. Yeah. It eight, I mean an eight thousand is on top of tuition. Yeah. Extracurricular activities and all so those other things. That's that's for him to like be kick it with. She has to pay that. That's. I mean, what I I wish I remembered the number from Mary J when she was getting divorced because yeah, I it remember was a, it was a crazy number. It was for a, alimony. like it was crazy. it was nuts. Yeah, and I'm like, I know Mary J makes makes money, but Jesus Christ, like, is that what we doing out here? But let a, let a woman do it. She a gold digger. She, uh, you know, what I mean? I, mm. she can't hold her own. Yep. She a trick. Yep. She a bitch. Yep. This that and the third. Black women always want money, and this that and the third. All these bitches. Can we bombs. do a, a, a let me, let's talk about uh, Irv Gotti? What he do? Because he was talking <laughs> about what, Irv Gotti, what did Irv Gotti do? He talk about how much he worth. I guess he sold all his stuff, and he worth X amount of dollars. But he like he don't like dating black women because all they do is want money. What else you got to offer? Irv. Because that face ain't hidden. This we know. <laughs> Must be the bag because it but ain't this your is, face. This is the rap that black women get. When. You know, like. It like the. the I, I mm, We going to have to do an episode we on gonna like have, stereotypes. Talk about these, the stereotypes talk about these black men because I even have some in my family yeah. that I'm disgusted with. We, you know? We'll have to talk about stereotypes. And it's, it's crazy as a black woman who has never been a stereotypical black woman. Like it. it like I, I get the insight of black men because they trust me and they talk to me. 
given I'm not the stereotypical, you know, black woman. And sometimes I'm like, the logic is ju- like, did you make that up? Who told you that that was the truth? Like, they made that shit up. They, I think and a lot of them hear sense. it from one another and it's just like, it becomes their gospel. And so, yeah, we, we gonna have to do a, um, cause they listen to their other clown ass friends. Uh huh. We gonna have to do an episode on, um, on stereotypes and, oh, maybe can that's one that me, you and Laura can I do together. Yes. That would be cute. That would be real cute. All right. Hey, we got to we got to hop into these topics. We got to hop into these topics because we're going to be here all night. Let's go. All right. First things first. Let's we talked about one of them already. Which one? Your boy. Trump. Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's OK. So we can we can just go on and knock that one out real quick. So Trump is going to turn himself into the Fulton County Jail um, tomorrow. The, but the so whole point of that, the whole point of that, um, that story was to talk about the fact that Trump is going to be out on two. $200,000 bail. Mm-hmm. Now, the Fulton County Jail, if you are not aware, is notorious. It has been Ugh. investigated time and time and time again because of how many inmates have died in the custody <clears throat> um, as prisoners in, in, in that space. There were 15 last year. Mm. There have been, I believe, five or six already in 2023. Are they investigating this? Mm-hmm. There is there is now an investigation going on. What's crazy, though, one of those deaths, and this just, oh, it, it, it ate me up, no pun intended, to read it. One of the deaths, his name was LaShawn. I cannot remember his last name yet. But um, this man was eaten alive by insects and bed bugs in his cell. Mm. Like, that's how dire the conditions are. That's horrible. So the whole point of that story was really to address, number one, that, um, of course, Trump will be turning himself in and that he will be released on bond because he has the funds. But number two, that he will be- that's right. Dollars. 200K, 200K, which to Trump is nothing. Yeah. Right. He probably paid one of his ex-wives alimony every month. 200K, like, is nothing. That's, that's like one of his kids, you know- allowance Monthly or something allowance. right yeah <laughs> so for for him it's nothing but you know he's going to this prison where if he were not wealthy he would have to sit there right exactly. if he could not bail himself out bond himself out the other thing that i really wanted to point out is that cash bail has been a topic of discussion for a while because it really does continue to criminalize the poor while it rewards and sets free the wealthy. So Illinois um, had a law that passed maybe last year. I want to say it was last year. And people were calling it the purge law. Do you remember hearing about that? Okay. People were calling it the purge law, but that was actually a narrative spun by um, police supported publications um, to, to push that narrative. So what the law actually did was say, Hey, as long as you were not, um, arrested for any type of violent crime, we will release you until it's time for your court hearing, which if you know anybody who's been in that system in the criminal justice system, like it happened to my own uncle because people cannot bond out, they lose everything, their homes, their jobs, because you can't work. You you are literally restricted to this right. space, right? You could be held for having two blunts in your pocket. And if you don't have the money to bond out, you literally lose everything, everything. everything. So what Illinois did was say, hey, like this is literally discriminating against poor people. And it's allowing potential rapists and, or, you know, we're on TikTok. So excuse me, TikTok. It's, it's allowing people who are convicted of violent crimes to get out because their daddy can pay or because they have a big bank account. So Illinois was the first state to say we're, California tried it and it didn't pass. Illinois was the first state to get it done. And it was actually challenged so much so that um, that part of the law was held up in court and it wasn't implemented. But now it is. And I appreciate it because it does allow people who may be, number one, wrongly accused, but held on something super petty, super petty, where they are not violent. They're not any flight risk. They really should be released on their own recognizance to get out and continue their lives and also build their case with their attorney or with their public defender while they can move around and keep their lives intact. You think about how many families this breaks up when people have to stay in these prisons for sometimes months and years just to get a hearing, to get a trial, to get a court date. And I love the fact that Illinois is leading the way. So I I, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. However, okay. I'm from Detroit Mm -hmm. and I I, I watch the news crime in a D Mm -hmm. every day. Me and my friend, 
We send each other stuff. And it's like repeat, repeated offenders. Mm-hmm. You let them out and they go commit another crime. But see, that's the thing about the law. There are very specific rules to who can be released without a cash bond. Because that that is my biggest problem. Yeah, you they can't be, it can't be a violent and- crime. It can't. So I, I hear and which is why people were which is why it was so easy to spin the purge law narrative, because they're like, when you think about the purge, the movie, right? People yeah. out there murdering people. You are no, they no judge in Illinois is like, oh, they saw you kill somebody. All right, I'm gonna let you out. Like, no, it it could be as simple as. I got caught with two blunts and they arrested me for it because it's not decriminalized in the state that I live in. Mm-hmm. And and how many people do we know that had just a little bit on them, just a little bit, not yeah. enough to distribute, right? Not enough to sell, but are literally being locked up and being held and losing everything. So, so if you actually go read through the law, I do agree with it because there are very specific rules. If you're like a convicted felon of a violent crime, no, I'm keep hold your you. ass. I'm yeah, hold you. keep your ass in jail. But, but if it's if I if I picked you up on jaywalking and your bail is fifteen thousand dollars and you don't have it, can you imagine you're going to lose so much for for walking across? And you probably the street. had an asshole cop in the first there place. There you go. There you go. It and and it also also. It makes the cops prove that you committed the crime. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. So if they pick you up and they're like, oh, you're you're, you know, a suspect in a in a in a crime. I'm going to hold you here. Right. I'm I'm arresting you uh, because I suspect you did this. You fit the narrative or or whatever. Right. It makes the cops actually go prove that (laughs) that this person committed the crime. You can't just keep me locked up in here because you think right that that I did something. So. I, I definitely hear you, but that I think that's why it's important. And the same way you talked about, um, you know, people watching the debate and really understanding what these candidates are talking about. Like, y'all, it is so important to actually read, read. these laws and read these policies. Because it's boring, we have I know. the Internet, like you have to go out there and do your own research yeah. in your county. It's so important. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know what's going on. Let me let me Google mm-hmm. real quick mm-hmm. and read and make sure I understand before I go, because it's so yeah. important. Yeah. And to know the details, because if not, you kind of open yourself up to things like the propaganda of the whole purge law thing. Yeah. And I mean, I, I watched black people spreading that narrative. And finally, I did a TikTok video on it and was like, hold on, let's back it up. Yeah. <laughs> let's back it up and actually break down what this is. And make sure that we are not helping to spread the narrative that's been fed to us about a law that's actually going to help y'all more than anybody else yeah. in this country. No. Like, let's let's be clear. And again, California tried it and it did not. It didn't pass on the ballot. And so and probably because people didn't research. There you go. And they didn't really know what understand. it was about. They didn't really know what it was about. I understand. Because sometimes right. now, listen, sometimes the language be real tricky. And on purpose, <laughs> on purpose. It be real tricky. Yeah, now. it be real tricky. But that's when you got to go do your research. That's it. G- look, it be words in them bills. I'll be like Google. Let me what? Because what does I'm this like mean? This, so do you want me to say yes or no? Let me go back and reread <laughs> Google, this. Let me see what this actually means. Because I don't trust y'all. <laughs> I at thought I was the only oh, person. I'd be like, uh, nah. so am I supposed to vote yes or no? I don't trust yes. y'all at no. all. Read. So, so yeah, educate so yourself. That was the whole point, y'all, was to talk about you know how. Our former president is, number one, getting arrested again, <laughs> but also how he's going to be released on bond from a prison that is notorious yeah, for losing predators. He's, yeah, but I hope he get that mugshot. I pray he gets that mugshot. And then Trump, how cash bail. Give us the mugshot. And, and how that cash bail really does impact people like us who may not who may not have it. Right. Yeah. Um, like, I don't want my mama putting her house up to get me out. So just, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that can be part of the the other episode. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk about how that shit impacts how we build wealth in this country. Right. Cause how many people, grandmas and mamas got to put their houses up on the line to get them out. What movie was that? Oh my goodness. When I first introduced to it, it was a movie. The mama done put the house up for the son and the son done. He escaped. Oh no. So she, Oh, she lost her house. Yeah. Dang. Mm. He it was, I think it was a movie with Oprah. It was Oprah. Now I'm gonna have to go look that movie up. Yeah. Cause are you not fool with me some Oprah? Yeah, the mama put the house up for the son. And that he done ran off. 
Dang. And okay. She lost her house. We're gonna have to look that one yeah. up. That's gonna be that might be yeah. my movie for tonight. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna see. This when I was young, um, it was really introduced to like what's really going on. Yeah, it it's so a deep. Mother's love. It's so deep. It's so deep. So so yeah. All right, y'all. So that that was the first topic, and you're right, we did kind of hit it. So boom, that one's out the way. Bam. The second thing we should talk about is these goddamn student loans. Mm. So repayments start in October. Um, the White House released or launched, I'm sorry, their new repayment plans. Is it really um, new? Their new income driven repayment plans. And some of them are new. I did look through it. And so tell me what's new. Because let me tell you, my prayer is that I wake up one day <laughs> and it says zero balance. That is Wait, my prayer. <laughs> so okay, tell tell look into that camera and tell Biden what you want. Tell tell Daddy Joe what you need. Listen, a <laughs> big papa Joe. <laughs> let me just tell you. I would love for you to balance out mm -hmm. zero my student loans. Mm. Can you make that happen, mm -hmm. please? Please, Big Daddy. Thank you, please. Because the shit is ridiculous, okay? <laughs> Joe, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe. Listen. <laughs> Papa Joe, I I'm not, we're it. not playing with you in these student loans. Like, listen, if it's over 20 years, let's cancel that shit out. Like, I love seriously. It. Like, let's go. I love it. Like, why are we keep wasting energy and time on it? Just cancel the shit out and let's so, move on and forward. Like, so, crazy enough, that's actually part of the plan. So, it's based on your income rather Which than is your, bullshit. your balance. It's bullshit. Well, so, okay. So some of the percentages have changed too. So remember like some of the repayment plans was like, I oh, still can't afford it. You can't. I still can't <laughs> let, afford let it. Let me okay? tell it. I ain't got it, Joe. I ain't got I it. I still can't afford it. Because. Income driven. I don't care how much the suit. It's still bullshit. It, let me tell you the, when I was, I, I don't, was I, no, I was on a standard repayment plan when I first got out of business school, when I first got out. Ask me how much my um, my student loan payment was. How much was it? Over a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I, As a brand new business school graduate, who I mean, I was making decent money. I believe it, but it wasn't like I was killing the game just yet. You know what I mean? Even if you are killing the game, it's still ridiculous. It it was it was terrible. Based on your income, yeah. I'm a single parent. Mm -hmm. My income is decent. Mm -hmm. I have mortgage, mm -hmm. <laughs> car note, mm -hmm. <laughs> extracurricular activity. My kid is alone, like 10 bills. Alone. Okay. Yeah. And you think like seriously. Yeah. Okay. And I know, listen, the government don't give a fuck about none of that. I know they don't. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. But <laughs> it's still like, it, let's keep it real in the reality of it. Yeah. Cancel the shit out. Uncle Joe, Papa Joe, my, whatever you want me to call you. Big Daddy Joe Joe. You what, want you me to him? send you my number? Maybe some feet listen. pictures. Like, you got pretty feet. Yes, that I, would be cute. Listen, I did. <laughs> because it's ridiculous. That, so yeah. when you say income driven, that shit don't tickle my fancy. Yeah, well, it income driven. makes me more angry. A specific, <laughs> a specific portion of your income, which is going to be lower than the income driven payments I was on before it is. But also, there, as a matter of fact, let me pull, <clears throat> uh, let me pull up. Let me put some facts the fact up. sheet for okay, you. Pull up the facts. Okay. Because so I'm not believing the shit. It has to be 10 to between 5 and 10% of their discretionary income. So that means after all your bills and your baby is a bill. 10. Five, 10 bills. <laughs> 5 to 10% of what's considered discretionary. So that means my going out money or drinking money. I You going to take 5 to 10% of that? Compared to what I was paying, I'll actually take this. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I can have a few drinks here at the house when before we go, go out. When does this go into effect? Um, the repayment start in October. Well, so let's revisit this after October and let's see. <laughs> we'll for see real, how for it real. goes. Um, let me see. So also, 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 also. Because um, I'm really sick of suit loans. Like, seriously. So, Okay. Cause didn't Biden tell us that he was gonna clear that shit? Like after 120 payments, so 10 years is now the new. Cause I think it was 20 before, if right? You graduated over 20 years ago. No, 100. percent So I graduated in 2015. I'm about due, and I was paying up until 2020. So I'm I am praying, and we don't know yet, but I am praying that those payments count. Cause that was. Are they gonna back date? That's what I. That's what I want to know if those payments count because that's five years of payments right there. Because if you backdate and baby clear me out right now, <laughs> Papa Joe, <laughs> we good to go. <laughs> we good. <laughs> go ahead and clear me right on out. We good, baby. Boy. We good. He said, "Now you don't perk me up, and I get excited." I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look. <laughs> 
low look. I and the thing is, like, I did a pretty decent job at like chopping my shit down while in those five years well, because I didn't. I'm listen. I the thing is, I was like, I don't want this hanging over my head. I wasn't working so in any good. type of what is like public service was like people who were getting forgiven. So I really did at the time. I'm working for a for profit company. Yeah, I didn't have any chance of forgiveness. None. And so for me, it was just like, I just got to. Can you forgive my friend too, Papa Joe? Please. Please. I'll put the camera on me. Please forgive my friend. Hi. And me. Hi. I, I can also help you with some policy if you like. Listen. She got the fee. for trade. And um, yeah. Listen, Papa Joe, we're a good time. Okay, <laughs> listen. If nothing else, we are a good time. We drink, we cuss, and we talk politics. <laughs> God damn it. We listen, drink. we are a good time. I love it. I love it. So, um, so yeah, they released that. Again, repayments are going to restart in, um, in October. What's crazy is like retailers are now getting worried. Like, wait, we've been having these record profits, right? Because people have had all this extra money to spend. They've been able to raise Is prices like crazy. They, do, do retailers really think that like, because they haven't paid student loans that people got extra money because of that? Well, for a while they did, right? Like, remember, I don't know about you, but I was saving a shit ton of money when quarantine hit and they paused them student loans. I got my backyard done. I got shit done around. I had all kind of, and number one, it was because we weren't going out as much. Mm -hmm. I, I want to admit that. Because let me say, y'all, Mel likes spinning. to go out. Mel, one of the friends I got to like put on Do Not Disturb because she always want to go out, but go ahead. Sorry. Me? Oh, me. I'll be at the house, y'all. I'll be right here. At, now, will I invite you to my house so we can pop a bottle? 100%. We'll go out to that fire pit, to that deck, and act a fool. Put, some, put a little something on the grill. So what they say, black people, as soon as it get a little warm, let's throw something on the grill. Listen, it can be cold outside. We're going to throw something on the grill. We're going to throw a little something on the grill because one thing I do really enjoy, y'all, I'm going to be honest, is this house. I love being at my house. And so to it's have so people mm -hmm. that I love here with me, eating, drinking, having a good time, listening to music, I'm here. Now, I will hit them streets. Don't get me wrong. I might go to Black Canvas this week. You going? I think I was going next week. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll go next week then. Next week is like a big thing. For what? The 31st. No. Oh, is it? Yeah. They play selling promo and tickets. And no. I got a date next week. Okay. I can't go next week. I'm going to have to go this week. Anyway, what are we talking about? Shout out to Gabe and GS and hey, and, and uh, Rockstar and Kev, and Kev and our friends over there. Those are our friends. Are, our are friends amazing. are so dope. Listen, if you don't have dope friends... Get some. Rethink. <laughs> Rethink your life. Seriously. Talk to the Lord. Rethink talk to your the life Lord. and let's talk to Papa Joe about these student loans. Yeah. Yeah. And and for our dope friends, because yes. I know I, a few of our dope friends that we just talked about, like they also have student loans. And, yeah. um, and a lot of them wake are up artists. One day and so, they're yeah. just like... Zero. Let me tell you. Like I just want my balance to be zero. I'm still praying that prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm writing my prayer journal. That's student it. Student loans. Yeah. Zero balance. I'm talking to the cosmic crew about it. It's real. It's real. Yeah. Um, all right. So next story, y'all. And this one, it's a good news story, but y'all already know I got to talk about the why of mm -hmm. the story. So, okay. Burger King employee. Have you heard about this one? He worked for the company 20 years. Never missed a day. Never took a sick day. What city and state was this in? Mm, let me look right now. Hold on. Look that up. So while I look that up, never missed a day, right? <laughs> Work ethic, when he retired, phenomenal. when he retired, he was given a, oh, Las Vegas. He was at the, um, the airport in Las Vegas. He worked at the airport. Oh, so, so. that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, he was given a bag of candy. Hold on. This is already some bullshit. <laughs> it gave me a fucking bag of candy. Okay. Um, okay, I gotta pull up the actual. There we go. Um, a movie, a movie ticket. One. It sounds like one. It was singular. It wasn't a plural. It was it no wasn't S. A pair of it tickets. Was, he he couldn't take nobody with him to the movies. Okay. Baby had to go solo to the movies. Um, they gave him a movie ticket, a coffee cup. I pray it didn't have Burger King on it. Jesus. And a few other small items for working over 20 years at Burger King without ever missing a day. Let me tell you something about me, baby girl. I'm going to miss me a few days because I'm going to have a sniffles. My allergy is going to be acting the up. The work ethic mm -hmm. and the integrity of this employee. Mm -hmm. Freaking phenomenal. Phenomenal. Freaking I, phenomenal. I applaud you. I, 
You know them kids like when you was in school that got like perfect attention. Like, you never missed a day since kindergarten. That was me. Hell no, that wasn't me. That was me. Let listen, me, child. Mom and Papa Henry, they made me go to school every day. No, nope. listen. Mm 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 mm. Because if I w- said I was sick, I couldn't go out and play. Deborah oh. would walk in my room, especially in high school, and if I wasn't out the bed, she'd be like, "You going to school today?" And I'd be like, mm-mm, "I ain't gonna make it." All right, no problem. Now and she would leave me right We're there. We're not talking about high school. High school is a whole different story. But oh. grade school? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I pro- but I mean, when I graduated from high school, like you, they're, like people were getting awards for like never missing a day since elementary or something I crazy. I that out of high school because if you didn't skip in high school, what I'm, was you doing with I'm your life? I'm confused. If you didn't just feel like staying at the house some days My in high school. My senior year, I didn't. I, I spent plenty of days at home. Let me tell you. I spent plenty of of days at home I, I in high school at, there were days my mother would walk in my room and look at me like you ain't gonna make it today I'm not I'm gonna take me a day and as long as I had all my assignments in I ain't had no tests nothing Deborah would go on right on to work and leave me where I was my parents didn't care and I would force their signature look, on the cause I was taking care of my business it wasn't like I wasn't See, getting I was sick so that's why I didn't go to school oh yeah no I ain't had no sickness yeah, my parents they was just like I'm like look I'm not feeling good today. I just yeah today I need a mental health day <laughs> I'm just not feeling it today. So this man ain't missed a day of work in 20 years. And that's what they gave him. So you know what the internet did? And sometimes I hate the internet, but sometimes it is a wonderful, beautiful, ghetto, ridiculous place. They raised oh, almost 500K for this man because he How had- did story get out? He, um, that's, in, in, I believe NPR picked it up. Did he post about it? Did Burger King yeah, brag that they had somebody retiring for 20 years? Like, how do we find out that this man didn't get shit for when he retired? Oh, uh, I was happy because I did not know everyone <laughs> did something. Oh my. <laughs> so he doesn't have internet. <laughs> he, no, he said, I was happy to get this because I did not know everyone gets something. He, he was happy to get the little package that he got. He doesn't have the internet. Oh, Lord. He doesn't um, have his value or his worth. Oh, here's how it happened. Oh, I love this. So he was so grateful for the little trinkets he got. Oh, it says, so. Ford, a big believer in appreciating small gestures in life, showed off the goodie bag on TikTok. The, viral, the video went viral, partly because people were outraged on his behalf. While many on social media said they respected Ford's work ethic and positive attitude, they also argued that he deserved more than a bag of treats Hell for private. Yeah. Burger King his executives. job over his health that led his daughter to start a GoFundMe campaign last June in hopes of raising some money for her father to visit visit his grandchildren in Texas. So he down. We should we should see if he in Dallas and find him dead ass. Cause sir, I would do a story on you mm-hmm. because I'm angry right now at Burger King. Burger King. Exactly. You got 24 hours to respond I'm, to I'm, us. I'm putting that in listen, my notes. I'm going to try to find his daughter and see if they're anywhere close. But Burger King, you have 24 hours to respond because I need to know why you didn't do anything above and beyond a candy bag mm. and some little. Because they're not required to. I know, but still, like as a leader, see, that's the difference between a manager and a leader. Okay. As a leader, you want to show appreciation to your Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. and you've invested over 20 years i'm gonna go to corporate i'm gonna go to ceo and like listen we need to do something yeah that's real 20 years and this man ain't never missed a day and i bet you the manager didn't even advocate on his behalf no but see that's the difference between a A manager manager and and a leader leader. say that because what they say a leader will tell you to go do it i mean a a manager will tell you to go do it a leader they'll roll up their sleeves and get in there with you and get it done and so 100 percent agree so shout out to his daughter and that is on my list of things to do tonight i'm going to see if they're anywhere near dallas please do that because because, yeah i'm always looking for a good story to tell and and it but it's but so again part of the green rod right is the bigger implication here and you asked the question, Burger King, why did y'all not do more? Like as a, as a as a company, a multi billion dollar invested so company. many years of his life. That's right. To serving, serving your customers. That's right. You know, I bet people were they came to Burger King yep. just to see him. I'm sure people knew him on a first name basis, mm. you know, and for him to be so grateful, you know, we're irate because we're like, he deserved more mm-hmm. because we receive more. But for him to be so grateful and so humble yep. and so proud of the work that he did, 
Burger King, you really disappointed. And you and let us down. Let, let's talk about how it's not just a Burger King then. So when I start doing my my research, right, and I start digging deeper, what I found is that a lot of fast food places, a lot of fast food chains, when quarantine hit, when COVID-19, and remember there was this whole thing about, oh, these are our essential workers. And all of a sudden they were really important. Like the people who we usually shit on in this country were really important. You know what fast food places did? They start rethinking their paid sick policies and trying to figure out how to get away with not paying hourly employees for being sick or being quarantined because they knew what it was. So when I look at stuff like this, I'm like, we have these companies that are literally trying to get out of paying people their due. Look at what happened yeah. with Yellow Trucking Company um, um, Company just, what was that, about a month ago, right? When they went out of business, I think they're... Um, I think they're headquartered in Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. You know, there was a, a viral TikTok, which is another reason why I love that fucking app. A viral TikTok of a man going off because he's like, I have given decades to this company. You telling me that my pension is gone? It's not like, what are we talking about? Like, what am I supposed to do now? And it's a huge issue when I think government will not step in and say like, ain't no way this man going to work 20 years for you. And he can't live yeah. after 20 years. So that is why I'm going to be honest. I love to see unions coming back. My mother was a union employee. I got to be close to the unions at a very young age. She worked for the County of Los Angeles. And so I saw what collective bargaining could do at a very young age. And I love to see the teamsters popping back up. Like they just cut a deal with UPS last night where I think 340,000 workers are now going to get raises where they can actually like live with the with the rising cost of living in this country. And that's what happens when people get together three. and they're like, yo, we're not going to work for pennies. Yeah, the in big three heat. is going through that right now. That's, they're, they're going through um with uh, is that Ice Cube? The big three, you said? No, Chrysler, Ford. Oh, the the auto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I got to LA a few weeks ago, I was there for a family reunion. There was a huge billboard by LAX that was like um, you know, we support the writers and the actor strike. The automotive industry has already decided to strike. And it was like another another industry that was like, don't make us join them. And I was like, I fuck with it. Yeah. I fuck with it. Yeah. Shout out to my dad, who's been at one of the big three for over 50 years. I love it. Um, but no, if they don't get it right, they're striking. And they are striking. It's so, the beauty of collective bargaining. Yeah. Like Starbucks. And I stand behind them. Amazon. You, know, you have to. You 100%. People. So let's talk about corporate for a second. Corporate blue collar. When you know your worth. Mm -hmm. You can demand and you can expect more. Yes. And for so long, we never knew our worth. Mm. Are you are we talking about corporate or relationships? Because I feel like you're also. We can talk you're about also, it, it, you're it, also it, sowing it, a seed into listen, me. Right? It, it, it ties, it ties all. She it, said, when you know your worth, it, it, you it ain't going to accept the bare minimum. It ties all <laughs> in. But you know, you know from corporate, they say, don't talk about your, your pay. Your pay, yes. Don't, don't talk share, about it to your, yeah. you know, don't mm -hmm. share that type of information. No, let's talk about mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. let me know what you're making because if you're not making what I'm making, then we need to go back to the hires. If I'm not making what you're making, then we need to go back and, and renegotiate. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you got to stand up. So I love, like you said, the unions coming together and standing up and not taking the BS. I love it. Y'all go up on these prices and making all these cars and stuff, but y'all don't want to pay the people that's making them. Stop playing with me and pay the people. And this just goes beyond the automotive industry. Every corporation, organization, job, pay your people. You guys go up on all your products and services. Pay your people. Yep. Just pay your people. Stop playing them. Stop playing with me. Pay. My pronouns are pay me. <laughs> pay and me. Do you want me to say that again? I just, look, I just shout My out to shout out to Mary for telling me our IG video had ended. Me. So we're back on. Okay, um, what Mary say? That I, our IG video had ended, so oh. I just restarted. Real one, Mary, are you enjoying this? Real one. <laughs> um, no, hundred percent. Like I, I, but sh number one, shout out to your dad because we we have talked about her father time and time again. Listen. Who should have retired? Maybe it's like I'm going to the job. Listen, <laughs> I need to get out this goddamn that man, house. <laughs> let me tell you something. That man, if he ain't working, he going crazy. Okay, that, he is going crazy. I actually really understand it though. I I really I, I, understand it. It warms my heart because I'm like, if you stop working, I don't know what you're going to do mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. yourself. 
Yeah. When that man, the nah, my daddy has had perfect attendance. Oh, we should make him a plaque or something. Yeah, he he you know? has perfect attendance. That man do Aww. not miss work. When he retires, like we should do like something. Like, he, like, he does that not would miss be work. dope. That, but I, you know, I I, I love it because because working especially at something tangible, like it's good for the soul. It's good to see mm-hmm. you know the thing that you've created go and change society and help people's lives and all that. Which is why I think like and he love he take and he takes such pride. I love it when he see them Dodge Rams on the street. Yep. Oh, he like yeah. That's my That's, baby right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. But he also gets irritated because he works in repair. Okay. So he talks about them little lazy ones that be on the line that mess <laughs> them car. Oh, that mess them trucks up. He be like, it's this week going to be rough. I we love it. had like 500 trucks on the line. I we love had it. to repair. I'm like, daddy, they messing it up like that. So, I love no I so. I love you know when I see people who um who really just enjoy what they do you know and they're what I mean? passionate about mm-hmm. it you know what I'm saying like this is good stock this yeah. is good seed that you have in your company that's right 20 years at Burger King like this man probably ain't never let nobody do nothing to get like he probably not saved y'all so much money yeah yeah I mean just think so about much the- retention with the customers just I mean think about even the premium that you're willing to pay for good service sometimes. Yeah. Like sometimes you're not going with the cheaper option. You're going where you know you don't have to worry, where the service is going to be good, where the quality is going to be there. And people like him, they're the reason that people go back to that particular store. They're yeah. the reason that when they go to the Las Vegas airport, it might be a Chick-fil-A right here, but I know my boy is down here and he going he gonna to give me extra fries in my bag every time. Because I ain't going to lie, I ain't been a Burger King probably five years, but. I mean, yeah, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but listen, they breakfast used to hit, but I don't know. I don't know. No, their chicken sandwiches used to hit. Chicken sandwiches? Oh, the little long chicken sandwich. They were long. They were like ovals. Yeah, yeah. I remember when they came but out they with changed, those. The, they changed the mayo or some change. Mm. But back in the day, oh, them chicken sandwiches. Yeah, and it was a cut it in half. Yeah, me and Bernice used to go. Man, that's my grandma. Me and Bernice, when they came out with them, we went to the one right on uh, Florence and Figueroa. If you if you from LA, you know what I'm talking about. Florence, stop playing with me. My parents' side street is Florence. You love. Yeah, I remember Florence and Broadway. That's funny. Florence and Pearson. I yes. love it. I lo- nah, like that one. Me and Bernice used to go through there. You know, on them days I wasn't going to school because my mom was like, "You good? You ain't gotta go." And we would we would roll up. So now we be on the hunt for good turkey burgers. That's our turkey thing now. We See, like a good turkey burger. Um, in Detroit, the Burger King up the street from my parents' house was closed down because people kept getting robbed. So yeah. understandable. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, I just realized that <laughs> when I was home last time. We can't have that. <laughs> we can't. I mean, they might need to send old boy over there to run the place. Like, he can get it in tip-top yeah. shape around there. Because yeah, yeah. we know that thugs will respect an elder if uh, it's the right elder. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, Burger King, get right. Fast food places, get right. But also, you know, let, like, real quick, let's have a discussion about retirement and the lack thereof specifically for our generation on. So millennials are in a very weird spot because of the generations before us, we have the least wealth at our age um, than in comparison to boomers, to Gen X, all of that. And a lot of that is because um, the student loan crisis and the the rising cost of living, um, inflation, but also that inflation wages have been stagnated. Is real. Yeah. Inflation yeah. is real. Plus our wages have not, they, they haven't kept up with inflation. So, I mean, when you really think about- do better. Please. For real. For real. Do better. Pay your people. Inflation, ugh. For real. Because, I mean, when you think about record breaking profits, I'm like, that means you're either cost cutting or your prof- your revenues are going up. And that means that that is not flowing to your employees. Right. So when I was in corporate, my last job, I think I got maybe a four percent raise, but we knew inflation was sitting at about six percent, which means I was taking a pay cut for even working for this company because my lifestyle was going to be more expensive than the increase that you gave me for the year. So. When, you know, you you can like bounce these percentages off of people and it looks great, especially if you're used to getting a one or two percent increase. But it's like, no, you have to keep up with the cost of living. Yeah. And so, yeah, corporations like do better because our generation, no lie, not, not only is it very difficult for us to buy homes and interest get, rates. Can we talk about those and how the Fed has what, what number was this? It's uh, freaking insane. 
what, what it was was it the tenth or it's it's been an, it's been crazy and we may be looking at another hike before the end of the year, right? Which is I'm so I know you're grateful for when you purchased your home. Oh my god. I built my home a couple of years ago and I locked in at a significant rate. Yeah. Yeah. One of my good girlfriends just purchased a home and I my mouth literally it's not the, to time. the ground. I said I was dead in her Is it, in, is it in a five? Hell. Where is it? Higher. It's higher. Close than... to seven. <gasps> oh my God. And see, I refied and put mine on a, a 15 year because that was going to give me an even better rate than what I got when I bought the house initially. Like I was on a 30 year when I bought and I was in the threes. I got in the twos just by putting it on a 15 year. Like I can't imagine being close to seven. See, I got mine in the twos when I built my home. Yeah. I, it was nobody but God. That's cr- Sevens. Yes. And, and I, and the, and with the price of homes right now, yo. Insane. So. Insane. But a lot of people she, do, do a lot to just do a lot to be seen, but it's. That's one reason why people talk about me because they say I moved out to the country. I don't care. And did I'm living beyond? I'm not living beyond my means. That's right. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's Let me right. tell you something. That's not right. Not at all. No. And me and my baby love our home. That's awesome. I, I, I am here for. One thing my grandmother told me, especially when I graduated from business school, she was like, um, "Find a lifestyle that you're comfortable with, and regardless of how much money you make." Just kind of kick it there. Like, and that will allow you to not have to work and grind for the rest of your life because you're not, what do they call it? A uh, lifestyle creep, right? So the more money you make, the more you spend, the more debt you get in, that the more you real. have to stay in like the rat race yeah. to keep up with the life, the lifestyle that you've garnered for yourself. And so that was probably one of the best pieces of advice I've gotten because number one, I love my neighborhood. I love my house, but also I could literally leave my job because I didn't allow lifestyle creep to come up on me. Like I could literally Can we talk about that one day. I could literally walk away and be like, She's I'm, my Shiro. She's my inspiration. I'm good. I can make it happen because I've kept my my lifestyle at a certain level where I know I can make this much money every month until like you know this shit pop off and y'all start sharing my shit and we blow up. But yeah, like for me. I don't, and I don't need a big 4,000 square foot house. Like it's me and two dogs. <laughs> That's how I feel about me and my daughter. Yeah. Like I don't need a huge house. Like it's just me, her and her friends. Mm-hmm. Cause they stay at my house for some apparent reason. Yeah. Like I'm like, y'all don't like going home. Like, oh, like, oh, yeah. like, okay. But it's, hey. it's comfortable. It's yeah. cozy. It's for us. Yeah. It's not over the top. When she go away to school, it's not going to be just too much for me. Yeah. You know, I love it. Even though I plan to meet me a rich husband and well, Big Daddy Joe house. might be interested. Listen, you know, Jill I'm might be saying. cool with it. She Listen. might, she Dr. might. Jill, no offense, I'm just saying. My um, my special Annette. Shout out to Annette. Um, but one day I laughed so hard because Annette. So she hates cooking, right? But she's married, so sometimes she's like, well, sometimes I got to throw that in the kitchen or whatever. So we were joking one day about like women who cook and clean all the time. She was like, shit, we need a wife. <laughs> we about to get us. <laughs> Wife. And I'm like, so shit. Jill might be cool with it. <laughs> she like, hold on, she cute. She <laughs> talk about cooking. I should have brought us some chicken. We're gonna do it in the bigger space. But so we can spread out. We like I I genuinely think we now. should do like this a um enough. I'm like a maybe a oh maybe a Kwanzaa episode. That would be cute. Oh, that would be so cute. We could do like chicken and like Hennessy. Just keep it, just black that shit up. Just black it up. Watermelon. <laughs> Watermelon's going to be out of shaker. season. Let's say with a salt shaker. What else are black people known for eating? Because watermelon going to be out of season come December. We got to do something else. It's not going to be good. What's it? Uh, yeah. Ain't, you know, they got the seasonal fruits, but I'm not, I'm not crazy about winter fruits. Like, yeah. mm, they not as sweet. We're going to figure it out though. Don't worry about it. We, I don't I'm know. I'm here for it. So, um, so yeah, so that's that y'all. Like, um, I, re- I really wanted to highlight, you know, this brother who had worked for 20 years for Shout Burger King. Him. Like, yeah, I totally commend you. I love it. Applaud I it. absolutely love it. Applaud it. And I will definitely attempt to see if he and his daughter are anywhere near, um, Dallas, because that would be really dope, um, for you guys to do a story yes. on him. And, and, and really, I, I think too, the bigger implications of, 
why this is even a thing in our right. country and the policies yeah. that the policies that allow for this to happen. Um, all right. So let's talk about um, Larry Elder and Charlemagne the God. Did you see the uh, did you see the the clip? Yes. On the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Charlemagne is crazy. <laughs> okay. He's 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 just he's he's crazy. Been 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 out of his kind of his mind. But I appreciate how he speaks out. Okay. I, I appreciate how he speaks out. Larry, I got problems. Okay. Why people always coming after the black women? <sighs> I'm going to just jump right to it. Larry, um, so it, I had to do a little research there. So, because I, it's a fun fact. Mm-hmm. One of the co-founders, we graduated from the same high school. Detroit, Cast Tech, Holla. Co-founders of what? The Fearless Fun. Oh, wait, yes. wait, wait. Fearless Fun? What are we talking about? The going after the... Um, Oh no, you're talking about Ed Bloom. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about Larry Elder who's running for president going off oh. on Charlemagne the God. Oh, sorry. But I know, I know what you're talking about. Ed Bloom, so what okay, so what she's talking about, y'all, 100 percent right. So <laughs> Edward Bloom is the same guy who did ran. The ice just popped? It did. <laughs> they, it was it was crisp too. It, it was, was it, it was a pop. snap. Um, so Ed Bloom is the same guy who led the charge to get affirmative action overturned at Sco- um, in SCOTUS this past summer, right? So remember the whole North Carolina thing, Harvard, he got Asian Americans on board to say, hey, y'all are letting too many black people in and it's keeping our kids out. Ed Bloom is now going after a venture capital fund in Atlanta, I believe, yeah, she's in Atlanta. Um, that funds... That funds, um, that gives grants rather <clears throat> to black women. It's a competition. It's not black women. It's women of color. Women of color. I'm it's sorry. Women of color. Women of color. Um, and it gives, it, it has a grant competition. So it doesn't give anything. You actually have to apply and compete yeah. for these grants. Right. And it's because, and matter of fact, B Nation said it next week, last week, it was like point zero three percent mm-hmm. of all venture capital funding goes to black women in black particular women. now yeah. what the, what the number is for women of color i actually do not know so here's a fund that's literally trying to close the gap he mad about it because we can't have nothing nice pretty much we just we just can't because have people always want to come the black woman we can't have anything nice so what what political experts and legal experts are actually thinking is that this is a test a test lawsuit to see if there's any precedent there Excuse me, so that he can take it to like a bigger stage and he can go after any anything, any competition, any grant. He messed with fun. the wrong people. Think about the SBA, right? The Small Business Association. Like, remember that they have those programs that say, hey, like if you're, say, a contractor or whatever with the government, so much of your your funding that you receive have to go to subcontractors that are women and businesses of mm-hmm. color or LGBT. I, I don't think LGBTQ. People are included in there. But um, but yeah, so the precedent could be set with this smaller case in Atlanta. But the good thing about that is that that fund has lawyered the fuck up. <laughs> they have lawyered up. Ben Crump has actually joined the team of lawyers that is going to defend this fund. Because if that goes through, if Ed Bloom gets his way the same way. So remember, he started He's at not um, get his way. UT Austin with Abby. Yeah. Back in 2015, 2016, she was mad because she was a legacy and didn't get into the college. You know what the fuck all, all the rest of us do, Abby, when we don't get in? We move on. We go, go somewhere go. else. Go somewhere else. Like, relax. Yeah. Relax. The like world another, is not coming to an end. Just, be easy. You know what I mean? But when that didn't work, and it was more of a PR problem when you think about it, because here was Abby, a young white woman, talking about black people getting her spot. The, the the optics were not good. So Ed Bloom, I got to admit, as evil as it, as it was, it was fucking brilliant. He was like, oh, the white woman is the problem. No problem. Let me go get some minorities to go against other minorities. And he got the minority that we know places getting their kids into Ivy Leagues at the top of their agenda. Yeah. Often at the top of their agenda. He knew who to go after. And I'm going to say it right now. Asian cousins, y'all got played. Because you know who didn't go over, go after is those legacy admissions. And we know who that mostly benefits. 
my knuckles just Crickets. popped the same way that Crickets. ice did. Um, so Larry Elder, let me tell you what happened there with, with Charlemagne and God. So Larry Elder went on the breakfast club. Um, Larry Elder is running for president. By the way, he mad that he didn't make the RNC debate. So he ain't going to be on the stage tonight. And apparently he's like, I'm going to sue the RNC. Uh, okay, Larry. Die. You had 1% of the vote anyway. You thought that you being on that stage was going to make people vote for you, my yeah. dude. Um, he was running. He also ran for governor of California against um, Gavin Newsom some time ago. There was actually a recall recount of the vote and all of that. He had like a fairly decent chance of winning, to be honest. But thank God Newsom pulled it out. So he goes on the breakfast club and Charlemagne the God says to Larry Elder, have you ever heard of an N-word wake up call? Larry Elder was like, tell me what it is. Charlemagne the God explains it and is like, oh, it's a moment of racism that makes you realize that you're black. Larry Elder says, okay, well, let's talk about that N-word wake up call. Because I remember specifically Joe Biden was campaigning for the 2020 election and he came on your show and told you in your face that if you don't vote, didn't vote for me, you were not black. And you didn't have no words for him. You had no smoke for him. Nothing like that. And here's this man telling you that if you do not think a certain way, you're not black. Larry Elder is giving it to him. Get like, you know, Charlamagne and God, like he usually got some comebacks, but he he had to take this one on the chin. He be, because although I really do not find many things that I agree with Larry Elder on, I do think that that was a loaded question to try to catch him up. And he forgot that he was talking to a career politician who was also a trained lawyer who was used to eating people like you for lunch. But that goes back to Democrats taking black people for granted. Mm hmm. No, Biden and, said and that. that's what Larry Elder was it, it, pretty much Biden getting said at. that to him. That's what you know? Larry Elder was pretty much getting at. So remember, so there were a faction of us when Biden said that that was like, who the fuck are you talking to? Like. Number one, you are not going to like shame me into voting for you. If your policies ain't hitting my dude, I'm not voting for you. Yeah. And let, let's be clear. Let's y'all. Th let me say this in the camera. Matter of fact, America did not vote for Joe Biden. America voted against Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah, this is what I got to know. <laughs> This let's be very because Biden. Let's not forget you had a role in the Anita Hill thing. You had a role in the war on drugs and mass incarceration. Like, let's not forget, my dude. And you're 80 like, years old. Yeah, I'm saying, just go enjoy your retirement. It's time to pass the baton, y'all. Mitch McConnell, Diane Feinstein, it's, it's Feinstein. It's about time. People, this is what they need to know. We did not vote. You know, I, I love the idea of having our first black VP. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going I'm to let you hear that one. I'm going to go fix our angle on Instagram real quick. Because I... <laughs> and Mel know how I feel about this. I just want people to show up. That's that's all. Yeah. That, that's all. I just, I, just, I just really want people to show up. But we did not vote for Biden. We did not vote for Kamala. Although it was exciting. <laughs> we, we voted we against just, the bullshit. We just didn't want Trump <laughs> ass to be back in the goddamn office. We can't like, get this, we can't let this man point, back in. I didn't care about a Democrat or a Republican. I just wanted Trump ass out of there. Lord. Okay? Like, that's the real. <laughs> I, that, Seriously. Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, <laughs> I was just like, damn. We were just these are our choices. <laughs> this is all we got. It. This is the best we could come up with, America. That's <laughs> why this is the next election. It is so important. Like, yeah. But but even the Democrats, right, when you look at the Democratic field, it's like, you know, Biden is the sitting president. They are they're they're going to have to hand him the nomination. There's no one that can that can really take it from here and from him. And that's the sad part, because is he if, is he. Can we do just a whole presidential mm -hmm. election? Because I think we should. I really think we should like. I yeah, that would be dope. Maybe like, ooh, what about like a live election night episode or something like that? Like that would be dope. It's gonna be a lot of drinking and who could listen. Mm -hmm. We can make some money too. Some how we gonna make some money, girl? What you wanna do? We can charge people to come into the establishment. Here we go live. Oh, that's cute. A live show? Yes. One thousand. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be dope. Like politics looking. You know when we put our masks together. I love that. I thought I, always I, think about I, I thought we was gonna be selling like feet pics or something. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't 
sure. I had to make sure I was on the right path, Lord. We going live. <laughs> we try to give me a little bit in. of that PPP loan Come you stole. On, <laughs> so, so yeah, like I mean, at at the end of the day, you know, people did not vote for for Biden. Like we ain't forgot what you what you've done to our communities and what you've been in, involved in Biden and how you keep falling. And it, and that's the thing. Like I'm like you, eighty. I expect eighty year olds to fall, which is why you probably you should be retired somewhere. Um, the same way that this man worked for twenty years and should be somewhere enjoying his life, the best years of his life, and that's what America says, right? Biden and and a lot, a lot of our politicians should be really retired. It's time to pass the baton, y'all. And we're not saying that we can't learn from y'all. So is it, okay, so let me ask you this question. Is mm-hmm. it time to pass the baton or is it time for the next generation to step the fuck up? That's the problem, though. So when you talk about the next generation, which would be us, it is our time. Millennials. Is it us or is it people or is it the generation before us? So I think, I think we. So X is in there. X, okay. You have you have Xers. They they have a, a fairly decent, but studies have actually shown and <clears throat> and the numbers do do work out that millennials have the least representation in public offices, and there's that is for several reasons. One of I'm which I just say it's reasons. <laughs> yeah, one of which we just talked about the fact that we don't have the money oftentimes to run for but these you offices. Can, but you, you can still run if you got a good plan. People are going to back you. I I hear you. I hear you. People but are going to I'm back. A, you. I'm gonna quit my job and live on a dream, like. I mean, you quit your job. <laughs> I did, but I ain't running for office. Like, I but did still, some for-profit shit. But you, but you living your life. <laughs> I did I mean, some for-profit shit. I mean, you living your life. Child. Like, you know. Yeah. I. So You, you so, just have to, you you can't be on bullshit and you got to really come with a plan. You got to be passionate and you really got to want change. I, I, I 100% agree. I think. People are going to back you. I'm telling you. I've you seen so? it in elections before. Oof. Yes. I'm trying to figure out the last millennial I've truly seen running that like, I'm like, cause I mean, you got the boys from, um, what was it? Tennessee, you know, oh, but they're brothers. Gen Z. Listen, they're Gen brothers. Z, right? Like it's a, it's a little different there. So I'm like, I don't, I'm trying to figure out the last. Man, mo- work for president. For president? Listen. I okay. Look, you. okay. Listen. Here, here's the way I would run for president. I ain't going to even lie. This is the way I would do it. Um, I would change my checks and balances as president to say like, A, my cabinet all have equal voices as me. Mm -hmm. So what's the cabinet? Uh, 12? I think it's 12 people. I put the smartest people I know on my cabinet. I'm talking people smarter than me. You're on my cabinet, right? And that's the thing about running for a public office i think there has to be a certain level of humility that says like i know i'm not the smartest person in the room i may be the most you know the the most well-spoken or something like that like people respond to me well but i need these people to tell me when shit is a bad idea or when i'm going down the wrong path i think that's one of the issues that we often have with these politicians is like there's a certain level of ego Hmm? and friendships and friendships people who people who genuinely gonna be like yo that's dumb (laughs) <laughs> don't do that. That's why I keep mail on my side. Don't do that. <laughs> Darrington, definitely on my cabinet, right? Because let me tell you, my boy DJ, sometimes DJ will call me out on something and I'll be in my feelings, but I'd be like, dang, I needed to hear that. I really needed mm-hmm. to hear that. Like, and so if I were to run for any office and for me, it definitely wouldn't be president because I've realized that a lot of power is actually held in but more local spaces. Local? Like, I local see, spaces, I, yeah. I, I see you into politics and actually before I came over today I was like when did I really like fall in love with politics Mm, you know mm -hmm. but it was a class I took and I was like okay this is dope you know like I ain't learned this in high school it's drama it's like ooh okay (laughs) the girls are tussling this is the easy (laughs) this is the easiest thing I ever got you know but you you do a lot of things with politics you keep us updated with current events like I look forward to logging on to Instagram to hear your quick five. Mm-hmm. Like you, and you've nailed it down. Like mm-hmm. you nailed it down for that frame mm-hmm. to get your whole five in before Instagram kick you to another <laughs> frame. Okay. Like you've nailed it down. You've been consistent. Where do you want to take this? Yeah. And I, I see you and, and I don't know if you ever thought about this and I'm not trying to like shift your show, Uh-oh. but I, you know, as we're talking about politics, like do you ever see yourself running for something local? Man, I don't know, because the thing I really love is 
keeping people informed about policy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, so maybe a reporter? I would, a reporter would be dope, but my whole thing is like, I want to pe- take people behind the headlines. So so the reason I even started this, the reason I even started the Quick Five. you know five, my wheels are spinning right now. Okay? The reason, look, okay, y'all, we, we, we doing work right now. So the, the reason I even started the Quick Five was because I would get on the internet and all people would report was the headline. Yeah. And not the why. So that purge thing, the purge law thing, Mm -hmm. it made me so upset to see this narrative being spun to people who the law was actually supposed to help. But it's not getting down to the nitty gritty. And it it never took them behind the headline. So I'm like, no, I read it, y'all. Like, let me tell you what it actually says and why this is actually a good thing for people who look like us. And so that's why I started. I was like, how can I make sure that people know what's going on, but hit them quick enough that I won't bore them? Yeah. That, you know, is like on your way to work when you getting ready for, for work, brushing your teeth, whatever, like it's two minutes of your day to learn something really quick. And then I started like a TikTok platform where I was like three minutes and let me teach you about this law or yeah. three minutes. And let me teach you about this politician, what's really going on in their office, in their space, whatever. And so for me, I think that's the space I would love to be in. Like would I love to be involved and close to politicians. Yes. But you, I, I know you already know because Dallas Weekly is deep, deep in, you know, yeah. in public policy and making sure they hold a pe- the, the people accountable, specifically in the, in, the, in the state of Texas. The respectability politics and the politicking that it takes to be in politics is not my thing. It like. I wish that I could walk in a room and be like, oh, I need to go get a photo op with this person because that. But you already know that's not me. Like, that's not me either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I my hate gosh. It. I hate <laughs> it on so many. I don't even like you while I'm taking a picture with you. That's that's what I think about often. But for me, it's how can we change how news is disseminated to our people to make yeah. sure that they are informed. And in this generation, in the year 2023, we also have to make sure that our people are entertained, that it's relevant, that it's culturally relevant. And so yeah. that's my that's my whole goal with this platform. So like for like, it's funny when Laura was on the show, um, who Toya actually knows as well, Laura was like, you know, I see you on an Al Jazeera on, you know, uh, a griot, something like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for all of that. But also BET don't have no real breakdown of, yo, what happened in the news today and why these things happen. We can get you on CNN. All right, get me on CNN then. Because I would love to argue with some of these folks. We, we can definitely get you on CNN. Can I wear a hoodie and a hat? No, I'm just playing. Listen, <laughs> we, we can definitely get you on there. So, like, so yeah, I like... So I, I see I, that. So, so Okay. We are doing work right now because, like, I, I, I have some things, you know. We we gonna talk about it. We gonna yes. We, we gonna talk because about I, it. I can I can see that. Like, you keep us informed. If you love what Mel is doing, like, comment, p- post a comment, and tell her, show her some appreciation. Like, we have to give you your flowers because you. this is amazing. Like you said, you make it relevant. You make it culturally engaging. It's, just, it's a conversation about what's going on in the world between between a group real, of friends. Like, we look at the shit anyway when we scroll through Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Scroll through Instagram. Yeah. Look at the... When you go down a rabbit hole on TikTok, <laughs> okay? Like, and you know you've, you've been down that rabbit hole before. But, like, you keep it yeah. real. Yeah. And you're stating the facts, but you keep it so that it's just like... I, I want more. What you gonna talk about tomorrow? Hey, like I, did Mel catch this? <laughs> like, is this gonna be her top five? And y'all, when y'all send me stuff on Instagram, when y'all send me DMs or like posts, like, hey, what do you think it is? I can't even lie. That a lot of times feeds my content, so I love that. Please keep sending me that keep stuff sending it. because a lot of times I'm like, damn, what I'm gonna talk about today? And then I'll look at my DMs and be like, well, I got a list of content so right here. I was like, damn, but you know, it's so much stuff that go on every yeah. day that it's just like, and I be up at two o'clock in the morning and. Shout out to our CEO at Dallas Weekly because I be we be sending each other stuff. I love at like it. Two or three o'clock in the Jess morning, is. like okay, this, okay, that, yeah, this, this, like you know. And so I'm always thinking of like, I don't always try to be the first to break news, mm-hmm. but so that's the dangerous part too. So yeah. a lot of times I see people trying to be the first, and I'm like, you haven't had time to even let the facts come out. Number yeah. one or develop the backstory behind the headline. So I, I think that's also an issue with like influencer culture because everybody's trying to be the first, but you cannot go into depth and really care. Like, inform people. Do you people. care who's the first to report something? I don't. I, I care about I, can I learn something from you? 
I could care less. Yeah. I just want what you say to be accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Speak my language. Credible. Yeah. Validated. Like, I could care less who posts something first. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And that's how I think. Yeah. Like, if we are there too late, I don't care. But I just want what we post to be factual. That's right. To be actual. And I want people to learn something. That's it. And that and and that's why, like, even when I, you know, do my TikTok, my three minute minute videos, I'm like, I wanna make sure y'all understand. So like I did one yesterday about um the uh about Larry Elder suing the RNC and I wanted people to understand like why he why was suing was uh-huh. and the rules and the criteria that the, the RNC had set for the candidates who were going to be part of the primary debate. If you don't know that part, all you know is Larry Elder is suing the RNC. But why? Like why? what yeah. happened yeah. to make him think that he could sue the RNC? And so when you, when you really start telling the story like that, what's crazy is People will watch one of those videos and what's crazy is they'll connect it to something else the next day and they'll connect it to something else they heard or read the next day. And before you and that's how I learned about politics is getting a little bit here and you be like, wait, all this shit is con-. after a while you start realizing that all of it really is connected. So now what's going on in corporate spaces mm-hmm. and with A.I., especially when they send out newsletters, mm-hmm. they talk about something and then it the the sub caption will be go deeper mm-hmm. to talk about yes. the why. There we go. Why are we talking there we about go. this? And so it's it's a domino effect yep. that's culturally, yep. you know, tapping into our space. And we need that yeah. because it's like, like, why does this matter? Let's go a little deeper. There you go. You know, there you go. And that's what you're doing. And that's also what in a corporate space, mm-hmm. in the corporate realm, in the AI space, because AI is, is booming right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's what it's doing. It's like, okay, here's the here's the headline, but let's go a little if deeper. If you want to know more, click this link this, and I'll explain this. to you how AI was it's developed. Not even a, it's not even a click. It's mm-hmm. a the next line is mm-hmm. go deeper. Yeah. And they literally say go deeper. So it's like, I'm making it known that like, this is what the headline is, but let me tell you why. It's yeah, important. there you, know you go. What I'm and that, and, and that is educating people in yeah. my opinion, that is informing people. And what's crazy and you is you have to be a continuous learner. You, that, you have to be hungry that part. for that. Like, that part. I want to know. We we talked about the Kiki Palmer incident, and we talked about you <laughs> and know, that man. What we, we look at, we we look at like it's stuff even relevant to even talk about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, I don't want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. But if it was if it was a spin, if it was something else mm-hmm. bigger to talk about, that's right. Then let's talk about yep. it. Like I don't care about her personal issues and what's going on with a baby daddy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not what I want to talk about. Yeah. But if it was something bigger and deeper to go deep, like dive into, let's do it. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. Now, if you want to go live and talk about it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about all that. Let's bring some single parent in. Let's bring some couples in. Let's, yeah. Let's let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear two married people talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We need some single people in there. We need a man. We need a what? Like, let's have a full conversation. But I don't want to post about that. Yeah. No. I don't care about that. We got the shave room for that. (laughs) I don't care about that. Yeah. We we got the shave room for that. And that that's a whole nother issue right there. But no, I, I do believe that to truly educate and inform people, you have to give them more than just the subject line. And it, for for and people, not a misleading subject oh. because clickbait. Oh God, it'll get you every time. Ooh, it'll yeah. get you every time. Yeah. So so yeah so yeah. Um, we're gonna talk. If y'all also, can see, I know me and Mel, we can talk. Dallas Weekly Radio is up and running, I believe. And so it you is. know what I mean, like a weekly show on Dallas Weekly Radio. Would Listen, be we dope. are expanding. I'm just saying, we, we are expanding. I'm just saying, I'm here for it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pitch this to uh, News USA. Shout out to Vanessa Vasquez with her amazing yeah. self. Um, but yeah, the, the whole goal is to inform people, entertain them. It's an hour and a half with your cousins just talking about what's happening. Do you happening have a PR person? The, I do not. Mm-mm. I may be picking up PR as a little side hustle. I love that. I love that. I have a I have an amazing producer by the name of Mr. Kenneth um, from hey, Sour Kenneth. Kids Productions. Kenneth, let me tell you something. Mel has been telling me your name. He's for amazing. Past 24 hours. And I'm like, Mel, do I know Ken? You don't know Ken, but you will know <laughs> Kenneth. I promise I'm like, you that. She's like, keep throwing your name out. I'm like... Kenneth Kenneth, and Nathan Wright IV, uh, or better known as Black, uh, Great Black Century. Um, but no, they, they Shout are, out to y'all. y'all dope. I love y'all. Yeah. I don't know you, but I love you. You, I you will, you. you will get to know this lady very quickly. Y'all, I will make sure that, that y'all meet her. Hey, 
we, we this last topic before we get into what you are working on okay. and your passions. We got to talk because you did a bunch of events around the celebration of 50 years of hip hop. Woo! Man. Um, and it's crazy because people are like, why are you talking about this on a news and politics show? Because honestly, hip hop started off as a political war cry. Yeah. Um, when you look at what hip hop started as, it was to really reflect the times and reflect what our people were going through in these major cities where we were seeing booming crime and drug epidemics and poverty and things like that. And so it was the creative space and the creative outlet for many people to, um, to, to push that out, like as a creative, I'm sure you can understand that when you have these big feelings and these big emotions, it has to go somewhere. Yep. And so that's how hip hop was um, was created. So you're from Detroit. Detail, uh, what up, though? I really want to talk about like hip hop in Detroit and like how you how you like fell in love with it and, and just what your experience has been with hip hop, but also the celebrations for the 50 year anniversary 50. and what that Listen. was like. We've been celebrating all month. Yeah. Super excited. So being from Detroit, like my fondest memories, my parents brought, um, they bought my brother a boom box mm -hmm. with a little TV screen. It had a TV screen on? And so we would plug it up and we would watch videos. Okay. On a little TV. So like that was my first like real memory. What? what so, okay. Videos. Was it? MTV, VH1, what, what was it? It was, no, it was um, Jukebox. Oh, shit, yeah. Yes, it was Jukebox. Okay. And so he was to watch the videos, like, hey, he would pull out on a porch. Everybody would pull up to P Street. What's up, P Street? All my people on the West Side, Brightmore. And we were just like, <laughs> hey, rep, hey, rep. <laughs> listen, I, I, I listen. never seen her do that before. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, I'm a rep my hood. And so we would, we would just have just like so much fun. I grew up working in a skating rink. I love like, to see skating coming back too. Like it's back actually. That's that's my heart and yeah. soul. Like my my brother still DJs at Northland Roller Skating Rink. That's dope. Like we were close friends with the owners at the time. Yeah. You know, they're still my family. And so we would always have like artists come and it was just like being so young, mm -hmm. but being so like visible it was just like thriving oh. it was just like so freaking amazing I, like i'm literally getting chills just like, like listening just, to you yeah like just uh, like the detroit scene is just so amazing yeah it's, it's, it really is amazing i remember watching a episode it was like all female rappers mm -hmm. You got the real Shantae and mm, see like Queen Latifah. Shantae, Shantae. Listen, and I had an opportunity to interview Queen Latifah. Word? Yes, like I've interviewed some dope people. Wait, okay. We need, wait. Why haven't I seen this interview and how can I see it? <sighs> well, it's with AT&T. Okay. Let me, but let me tell I you this. Care. Queen was like, Oh, you cute. I like Queen. Don't play with me. Look, because that little wife of yours will get replaced. Listen, Queen, do not. Because that little that. wife of yours, she I, cute too, but she will but be. But I do have the, I, I know I have the picture of my phone. Send that to me, yes. man. Was, was that when you had the fit on, like that was kind of Queen Latifah inspired? No, that was a party I went to. Okay, because that was cute. Year. I just that was cute. Listen, I was salt and pepper slash JJ yeah, Fat. Okay, okay. Listen, listen. That was cute. But no, I took, I, I got a picture with Queen. Um, It was doing like a business summit mm. and she was the head speaker That's for that so event dope. and had a chance to meet her and interview her and she was just looking at me like you work for this company I'm like hey for now <laughs> hey, you know? we had it was such a dope chemistry yeah a dope me like I've met so many like just dope people just being who I am and just being able yeah. to be in these spaces. I you love know? it. I love it. Like hip hop is truly a form of art that allows you to be free. Mm -hmm. It allows you to be creative. It allows you to make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah. That's you know? dope. And so I, I love that. I love being able to just continuously just meet dope people. This weekend I'm going to 
a private event, mm-hmm. the Def Jam is throwing. Mm-hmm. So to be able to be in rooms with people like that's that, right. like with incredible artists, incredible, just, yeah. Listen, because when I went to the Team Hennessy event, I got my limited edition um, Nas. Come on Hennessy now, bottom. Listen, Nas. He's can like I, my favorite. Can I just say, One Mic is still one of my All I need is favorite one songs. Ay, that ay, third verse. Ay, so the ay. thing is, like, remember, like, he started off, like, his first two verses, right? He started off real quiet and he, and like, that third one, crescendo. He just, and then uh, he, he just, crescendoed uh, and then he uh, decrescendoed uh, in that third verse. And I was just like, the artistry of it. Oh, the it climax. was climax. Like, beautiful. You, you know how with you, ooh, that climax. Beautiful. It was on point. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Magic I mean, was being made. Like magic was it, being made. You talk about magic being made. I kid you not. So everybody like, what you want to come back as your next life? Let me tell you who I want to come back at. Like a mic in a studio with all the dark, like the dope Wait artists. Wait a minute. Do y'all know that she's an artist? Because I remember an event we had. Mel was on the drums. Uh, <laughs> Mel was on the I drums. I grew up playing music. I did. I did. She was on the drums. But low key, I don't know if you know that I like, I'm a former singer. You did. Yes. I've heard you like play around and you can sing, oh, sing. Oh, you sure did. Yeah. yeah. So I, remember, I, was, I was like, Tori, you can, you can sing. True story. In the skating rink. Senior year, just graduated from high school. Met a producer. Mm-hmm. And my friends was like, oh, yeah, my friend can sing. And he was like, he had a group who was performing at the skating ring that day. Okay. And he was like, okay, let me hear you. So I sing Escape Tonight. Okay. And he was like, let's go. I want you to go on tour with me. And I'm like, well, I got to call my mama. <laughs> <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. Now I can skip some school, but to just go on tour. <laughs> my mama was like, girl, bad. You about to go to Central Michigan University. <laughs> Ain't going to get your degree. Listen, man. And so yeah. I never had the opportunity. But he was like, come on, let's go. You going on tour with me? Yeah. And I was just like, and I just, you know. Because of my love for music, you know, but also because of like my parents taking care of me. Yeah. It was like I had to follow up my but had I taken that opportunity. Who knows? Who knows? So my baby, she can blow. Jada Jade, y'all. She can blow. Like her voice Baby Girl can sing. Is amazing. And I won't let nobody touch her. But if the opportunity came before she graduated from high school, yeah. baby. But, let's but the thing, go. the difference is you would be that mom that's right there. That that's the difference. And I tell her that all the time. I'm yeah. like, listen, my mama didn't know what to do with yeah. me. But baby, listen here. And that, that opportunity comes. You said something right there. A lot of times our parents just don't know what to do with the talent know, that they Because yeah. my mom had raised her kids. Mm-hmm. And then when I graduated, she had grandkids she was raising. Yeah. So she just she was like this toy. I, I was raising myself, yeah. basically. She was yeah. like Toya. And yeah, you, you're gonna go to college. You're you're not gonna be a stress factor. In Same my life. story. <laughs> Same story. You're, like I'm not about to play these games with you. When you're an exceptionally talented kid and your parents are tired, they don't know what to Beyond do with you. Tired. Like, they, I done t- raised four of these kids already. My Lord. mom now she lives like my daughter's life. She 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 like misses. She missed so many years of my life mm-hmm. because she worked in corporate America that she's reliving after my daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I love to watch it. I love to watch both of my parents, you know, but my mom, she's like, your mom, she like, your mom legit. I would have never done that stuff with her. Yeah. And I'm like, I love the way my parents raised me, but it's stuff that I'm like, I'm breaking generational curses. Yes. Like, baby, if you want to do that, let's go. That's, that's like, real. I don't care. Let's go. That's so important. I got time to take off work. Let's go. That's what so you wanna important. Do? Let's go. Yeah. But I let her tell me, I don't want to push her into doing anything. I want her to be like, mama, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to support you 100%. And she can sing. Like, like y'all, Toya sent us a video probably a few months ago. Yeah. I mean, it may have, was it her like end of year it was a senior showcase yeah and she was in a, a little scene from hamilton and i had never heard her sing and i was like what i was baffled i had chill bumps like i hear her sing at home when she rehearsed and it's just it all blends together yeah you know, because i hear her so much but when she was on that stage yeah and she turned into this character yeah i had ch- like i almost missed recording the video be- that was like the last you part was of the it. scene. Yeah, I had chills. Yeah, and the lady next to me was like, "Is that your daughter?" I couldn't. I was ignoring her the whole time because I was just like in awe. I love it. Like, girl, I love it. People were coming up to me after the show, like, 
she is amazing. And she is. They're like, she needs to be on Nickelodeon and she needs to be on Disney and this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, Well, we definitely ain't letting Disney touch our kids. We see what y'all do. Whatever (laughs) you want for her. And that, just equipped me to be able to, you know, to to just be by her side. And I and that number one, that's a big step, I think, as a parent to take because, you know, you you didn't necessarily have that nurturing for your gift, right? Yeah. And so to be able to even pray that prayer of like, just yeah. equip me to do what I need to do with my child's gift. Is, or to help my child do do what she, what she will with her do, gift. I'm here for. Yeah, she's been rehearsing for. She has auditions coming up. She had audition today. She got one coming up Friday. And just to watch her evolve mm. into this thespian. I love it. And to this person that has a great appreciation for the arts. She like, yeah, I know I can sing, but I want to perfect it. No, and that's that's love for your craft. Yeah. That is love for your craft. And I just, yeah. I love watching yeah. it. Yeah. I'm just like, she's not doing that because that's what I was. No, she she's doing it because it's inner. Yeah. It's and inner. Just, it, like these next two years... And I'm just excited. That's an artist for you right there. Like that is like, it's funny because I, you, you mentioned me, you know, playing drums. I grew up around. Mel was, when I say y'all playing, Mel was playing them drums. She was like, I used to really play, like really play. No, she don't have the audacity. (laughs) So yeah, I had so many people coming up to me after that. Like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, I didn't tell y'all. Yeah. I used to be a whole ass. You totally missed that I used to be a whole ass musician. So my friend. I know her favorite color, her favorite drink. But never do she can play drums. <laughs> so several instruments. It's not just drums. That's what's crazy about it. But um, but yeah, so like I, you know, I think about the artistry, right? Like, you know, from Jayla to to, you know, our our hip hop artists that we grew up with to even what's coming up now. I don't know if you saw my last story that I posted on Instagram, but randomly, like I ran into this freestyle of, you know, this this artist, this hip hop artist who I mean, it it was like a mix between Rakim, Busta Ooh. Rhymes, and then at one point I heard some Kendrick in there, and I was just like, and they're from Dallas. The, no, I don't know where. Oh. I don't. I, no, I'm saying no, but I'm not sure where he's from. He was on like a podcast. Okay, gotcha. And right, he gotcha, like gotcha, they gotcha. just asked him to spit, and he was freestyling. But it made me think of Fifty Years of Hip Hop and the fact that. For a long time, we were getting rap rather than hip hop. And to know that hip hop is still alive, it, it, it's the a, message it, is still there. It's so alive. Yeah. You know, it, it's so alive. And I think people have their own definition of what like hip hop means, mm-hmm. you know, but it never left. No, I so I think it got pushed to the the margins for a little while because commercial took I over. I think people tried to redefine what hip hop was. And so so when when the re, redefinition came up, that's what I considered rap. Yeah, I was like I, y'all I, rapping, but for me, hip hop was when it started. Like when there was actually like you were saying something. Like Tupac was hip hop. Like KRS One was hip hop. Do you remember the movie uh, Crush Groove? I don't think I've seen Crush Roof. No. That was probably really my first time I fell in love with hip hop. Let me let me look it up now. Look up Crush Roof. See where I can you find it. You had Curtis Blow, Fat mm. Boys. Mm-hmm. You had New Edition, mm. Blair Underwood. He put, so the story follows um, Russell Simmons. Okay. And how kind of like Def Jam came together. You had LL Cool J, Run DMC, Sheila E on the drums. Killing it. You, I got, by the I way, you, I got to watch Sheila E with Prince at the Forum in Los Angeles uh, before Prince died, and when I t- and Whitney Houston came up on the stage, Shaka Khan girl, came up on what? the stage, baby. That was it. Was Prince was supposed to be out of the venue by midnight? We partied till two a.m. He was like, "Fuck these people," as he should have. We grooving. We grooving. It was nuts. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Sheila Man, E was on the drums. You have to watch Crush Groove. You will th- thank me later. Okay, crush thank group. Me Here we go. Later. 1985 film. So okay, I I was five years old. Ooh. I was five years old. That was my first introduction to hip hop. Crush okay. Groove. And YouTube has it. Boom. We're gonna be watching that. When That's I it. tell you that, so many, so many artists that was in that, and to be able to just follow their journey mm-hmm. and to see, and I am the biggest. New edition fan. I love it. Ever. Didn't you and go to, to that concert them, recently? 
<laughs> like not every too long year ago. They, yeah, every yeah. year they hear I, I come because I'm let like, let me tell then you. I see you. Let me tell you. So one year. <laughs> Michael Bivens. A shout out to my girl, Sally. Mm. So we're like in the fifth row and she like, girl, Michael trying to get your attention. And I'm like, girl, whatever. And I looked up. He pointed to me. Baby, he sung to me the rest of the night. I love it. I see it. Michael Bivens, let me find out you got a little crush on me, okay? I <laughs> let me love find it. out you got a crush on me. I so love it. You know it. So my baby, she she loved when I tell that story. She be like, yeah, Michael Bivens was like, oh, my mama. <laughs> Michael Bivens was going to be my stepdaddy, but my mama turned him down. Don't even worry about it. That's how we do in this house. <laughs> but no, hip hop it is alive. I mean, we have so we have so many dope local artists in Detroit. For real. For real. I compare it to Atlanta. Okay. I just feel like on the Detroit scene, we don't support our local artists mm. like we should. Okay. You know, um, but like you take a Jeezy, for instance. He mm. loved Detroit. When you, I know everybody watched BMF. You think about Meech and Terry and what they did. You can't talk about them without talking about hip hop. Yeah, that's you real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And, and what it cultivated and, and what it meant and what they've done for so many hip hop artists. I love you know? it. I love it. Um, it's, 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 it's just thriving. It's thriving. I love it. I love my city. I rep it to the day I die. I love, I, well, and what's crazy is I don't, I didn't know a lot about the Detroit scene. So like, I mean, just talking to you has taught me so much, like being from LA, like we have a very specific hip hop scene, right. That I grew up with, but yeah, like, and if you ever see eight mile Eminem, like yeah. rap battles, like that's really a thing, man, that is really a thing. And that's why I go back to my skating ring days. I love it, man. It just, that was a good time. Like when I say I lived a good life. Oh, we, you know, me and my friend, we were having a conversation um, the other day about like, if you went today, she was at, she was turning 36. And so uh, I was like, you know, how do you feel about your life? If you went today, how do how you feel? She was like, I've lived. And when I tell you that is one of the most satisfying feelings to have, like, I've done good things in this world. I've loved, I've been hurt. I've had a good time. I've I, oh my God. Like it, yeah, it, it has been incredible and crazy enough. Hip hop has been the soundtrack of that life for me. I, like I'm, I will be a hundred percent honest. Like I, and I love R and B too. I love all kinds of music. My sister made me fall in love with country. You know, I love lo-fi. You would be impressed with her palette of music. It, to to be an artist is to be eclectic, right? You have to her take favorite in. Favorite group is Queen. Hey, I mean, okay. Tell not matter of fact. Where's my camera right here? Uh, baby girl, go listen to Dan and Shay. I should probably go to bed. It is an ode to Queen, but it's country. One of the best songs I've heard come out in a few years. I promise you. She probably already know it. Oh my God. When it's she listen to music, so good. She was like, mom, can I like plug in my phone so I can listen to music? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> but, not while I'm driving. That's what my friends do to me. Like, oh, <laughs> hell this. no, not but, while I'm driving. But it's about what your energy is doing for the day. Yeah. Like some days I'm on a hip hop, like, but like today, I can't even lie. Like I was in a very like, you know, interesting state of gratitude so i was listening to like more Londrell, janae aiko type stuff and for me like that stuff is more spiritual right uh -huh. um but some days i'm on my like yo i got shit to do i should probably turn on some nipsey some Pac. like other days i'm feeling in a mix and i'm like all right maybe the chance the rapper station is is gonna hit because that's gonna give me a little church but also a whole lot of hip-hop a lot of hip-hop which, which i and can we also talk about how hip hop is able to merge with different genres in incredible ways? Like I love BJ, the Chicago kid, Chance, the rapper, what, the way they have taken their gospel roots mm -hmm. and merged it with Lecrae, another fantastic artist. Now I will who, say yeah. one thing my church does and they tr like try to keep the youth kind of involved. They have all this fascinating <laughs> gospel rap mm -hmm. that I've never heard of before mm -hmm. and you would never know it's gospel rap. Yeah. And I just think it's so freaking phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Like you have to take what the kids love 
and what you want them to learn and yep. merge it together. That that's it. And I'm like, y'all really jamming back here. That, okay, okay. And so so what you just said is so interesting. And this is how I know we're gonna end up working on something together because you have to take what people love and merge it with what you want them to know. And that's yeah. what this show is, right? It is what Dallas Weekly does very well. When I watch what you guys put out and how engaging your content is, it's incredible because I'm like, I learn something every article, but it's also fun as hell to read yeah. and the reels are dope. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, so I, I mean, that is artistry. And I think, you know, Nina Simone told us that an artist's job is Ooh, to literally reflect art, reflect the times. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at where hip hop started and what was going on in our country in particular, and and how those those people were expressing themselves from the DJs to the MCs to like the flat out lyricists who were like in the basements, you know what I mean, doing the battles, real lyricists. like real Come lyricists, on. and the DJs on the turn. Oh back my god! I just recently wrote the article about hip hop. And I was yes, to I use saw. Some, I read I was it. To use it was good. Language like on the ones and twos. Yeah. Listen, it was. I was DJ Toy in the back back in the day. I like, love hey, it. DJ and, Toys, scratch, scratch, scratch. And, and shout out to our our DJ is out here Fife and, and GS and She Real Fife, who is incredible GS, real, just impeccable DJs, we love them um, yeah like listen cause that's an art y'all are part of an that's incredible a special artistry yeah cause when I'm at some place and I hear a DJ and they don't like Transition, yeah, that right. transition's got to hit just right. Ooh. I um, Bipus. I recently Bipus. met Bipus. he he nasty, but she oh. real like I've I've watched her because remember we was working with she real with the network. Mm -hmm. Remember like early on, and even Fife and GS, and I've watched them grow. And um, just a couple weeks ago, I met um DJ C Wade. Do you know her? Mm -mm. Make sure I will make sure you know her. Um. I mean, she, I call her up and coming, but she's probably, probably already established. Her before, but her mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, so I met her, she's good friends with one of my friends and, um, you know, I was, I was at a party, she was DJing and some of her transitions, I had, I had to stop partying and look back like, see who was on oh, did you, did you just do what I think you just, it was nuts. And it, you, you just realized like, this is a true art form for these people. Yeah. It's That's incredible. Why I love black canvas. Mm -hmm. I love what Gabe and Kim, I love what they're doing because it's so impromptu. Yeah. It's not staged. Yeah. It's, it's real. free flow. Yeah. They're having a good time. And that's what hip hop is about. And the oxtails be hidden. Time. Shout out to heroes. Can we go get some oxtails? I'm going to, I told you I'm going Isn't tomorrow. Is it heroes tomorrow? It's at heroes tomorrow, baby girl. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a lot. I'm just, I'm pulling up. Just I'm just let saying. Let me know what time. Yeah. No, because the oxtails was. Good. I think I got the trio last time. I just want oxtails. Like I want the oxtails, the oxtails. rice and peas, and the cabbage. Just, I'm good. Just give me I'm, oxtails. I'm good right there. But no, what goes on during Black Canvas is just fire. Mm -hmm. And hip hop is an opportunity just to have fun. Yes. Be free, and that's why I love it. Yeah. I, I, Jay Carlos I with your rapping ass, <laughs> boy, rapping singing ass. Cause that boy, that's a bad boy right there. If y'all do not know Jay Carlos, we're actually going to tag him in this episode. Yes. Because he is from, um, I believe Shreveport, if I'm not mistaken. Come on, represent. Um, and he is incredibly talented. It, I, like the first time I saw him perform, I was like, yo, this is hip hop. Like my man is spitting this is just what based on is. what he's looking at in the room. This is not anything pre-written. And that's how you know it's real. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's, coming from the soul. Yeah. Like some somebody some something put that in him and that's coming up. So so yeah. All right, man. Let's talk real quick about um what you working on, what you got going on outside of being the brand new VP of Dallas Weekly. Congratulations, sis. Thank you. Thank, um, you, thank, you, thank you. What's next for Latoya Henry? What's up? You know, I'm in this weird space that I'm open to whatever. Okay. That's weird. Yes. Okay. That's different for you. It's different because okay. it's out my norm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just allowing life to happen. Okay. Wherever I go, I'm a flow. I'm enjoying these last two years of my daughter in high school. Mm. And my schedule literally revolves around her. Yep. You know, and I just love how she's just transforming into who she is. Mm. And I, I love every aspect of it. Um, she just turned 16. We just had an amazing four day celebration. And I see her coming out of her shell. And it just makes me happy. And people are like, oh, that's a mini you. 
No, that I was not. I didn't have that mm-hmm. when I was sixteen. Mm-hmm. She has that and more, and I'm embracing and I'm taking it in. Um, Dallas Weekly, we're continuously evolving. Next year, we're celebrating seventy years. You, so, but but Toya, let me say and let me give you your flowers right now. Since you have joined that organization, like y- you have become integral, and I I can tell, I can oh. tell with just like like the the relevance for people my age, right? Because I'm gonna be honest, like Dallas Weekly was not on my radar um b- before you got there, but I I have seen how y'all have embraced things like 50 years of hip hop, right? And covering cultural, culturally relevant things, but then taking the story deeper to like, hey, let's talk about the history of hip hop rather than just like yeah. giving you the byline. And so I I the promotion was not a surprise for me, at least it is well-deserved and I Thank know you. you have earned it. So I'm so proud of you. And I'm, I'm like, I really cannot wait to see what's next for you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. No, we, we have so many different things coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And I love that in this space, like my voice matters, mm-hmm. you know, the things I say and do um, because I'm passionate and I've been in Dallas for over 10 years and I'm like, I've been here taking up space. I need to do something, yeah. you know, and being able to be a part of the Dallas Weekly family. Shout out to all of the team, yes. to Jess and Patrick, to be able to be a part of the team and to, to let the world know, like, what Dallas has going on. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just such a thriving feeling because there's so much good stuff going on. I love it. It's so much. When you think about politics, hip hop, education, there's so many things Dallas is going the new on. melting pot, man. It's so many things Dallas going is the new on. Melting and so pot. I love I love a good angle. I love a good story. And so super excited to just see the trajectory of where we go. So make sure y'all follow us, the Dallas Weekly yeah. on all platforms. Yeah. Now let me show y'all. Shout out to Cicely. Sis- oh, Thank yeah. you so much for this beautiful, beautiful plaque. I went to a meeting um, a couple weeks ago and she presented me with this. And I just thought it was just the absolute sweetest, most thoughtful gift ever. Um, I'm super excited for the platform that I have and just being able to just shine a light on a different things. Um, shout out to Jazzy from 97.9. We um, we partner on a segment called She Reps. She mm-hmm. represents and we highlight women in the DFW area that's doing phenomenal things. And so if you know somebody yeah. or if you are that somebody that's doing great things in the DFW area, I love that. let me know. Let me know. You get a feature yeah. in Dallas Weekly Plus. It's an interview with Jazzy on 97.9. I, I love that because I love breaking myths that black women don't support each other. I love that. Yeah. And this, I, I love supporting our black women. I, I love, love that. supporting my sisters because we are so dope. Yeah. The things that we're doing. And we just need to bring light and visibility to, to what they're doing. I love it. And, and what's crazy about the whole situation is, um, I think Tarnisha did, yep. she reps, right? Mm-hmm. So one of our good friends, that, that was the first time I heard about it. Really? Okay. Was, yeah, was when Tar did her story, which was, I, hmm, I'm trying to remember. It was like it was a, after Juneteenth last yes, year. Yes, that's what it was. Because I think so she was probably per- June or July. She had performed at Juneteenth. Uh-huh. And then With that's the when network she, DFW, shout yeah, out to our peeps. Shout out to the network. Oh my God. The network is just, Amazing. just, Coda, the whole thing is growing like crazy. I, I just, I love to see it. I love to see, it's so cool when you watch your friends start something from inception, like from a seed and, then, and grow it and yeah. like stay consistent. E- even when ain't nobody showing up, they like. I'm telling you, I would, I would write a book on consistency. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's so. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. Like for real, y'all. And what's crazy is um, my friend B Nation, who was on the show uh, just last week, you know, she was we, before we even started recording, she started talking to me about that, about like how when people see you being consistent, that's when they're more willing to support. Because Absolutely. so many people are just like, mm, I'm going to try this wonders. thing. And if it don't work, yeah. then I'm going to quit. It's so easy to give up. Yeah. And it's like, nah, are you still going to grind it out when only two, three people are watching your story? When you only, only get two likes that's it. when you finally drop the podcast. That's it. That's it. And it's like, all right. But at some point. The, the algorithm or the people will pick it up, 
Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's really about like you having a passion and really starting to enjoy the process, which I think I am learning more and more of like, like, nah, this is actually really fun for me. Like this is something, these are conversations I would be having anyway. Anyway. If I wasn't, These are like our talk today didn't feel nothing different because this is how we would normally talk. That's real. But you was talking about tea and she rips. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time you ever heard of She Rips. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's it it allows us to really like a breakthrough for women who are. And I yeah. always tell tell recipients, let me know when you're coming out with a product, when you're launching something. Like yeah. let's be very strategic about when we do this, so that it gives you the visibility that you need. Mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. help grow whatever audience or visibility that you need. I love you it. Know? So I, not only do I always look for a good story angle, I'm always talking and coaching people yeah. about like, this is how you grow your brand or this is the best time mm-hmm. to break out with a story mm-hmm. or the story shouldn't focus on you particularly, but what are you doing and yeah. then mention you in the story. So storytelling is, is so unique. It's a, it's, it's an art. It is an art in itself. It, it's yeah. an art. It, it takes you back to hip hop. Hip hop is the originator from storytelling. That's right. That's, you know, man, what's up? Uh, oh, what was my song as a kid? Um, fuck. Uh, Mine's here was slick Rick. we go. Yes. That's who I, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where I was trying Rick. to go. When he I, is the, no, he's the you king could of visualize it. Yes. You could literally visualize it. Like, yo, he is telling us about how somebody chased down the street and knocked the old woman over, turned around and said, my bad. Like, what? Yeah. It, like, storytelling, y'all. It is, it is incredible. And so, it's and powerful. Another it's shout out to, um, to, um, Dallas Free Press and their journalism program because they are really attempting to garner the next generation of storytellers um, in the out. journalism Those space. Those are partners. We love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the sister of, really the sister of, of Dallas uh, Weekly. And so, yeah, the whole goal is to make sure that our kids understand this, the power of storytelling and how you can genuinely not only change the narrative, but potentially change the hearts and minds of people mm-hmm. um, with with how you present and tell a story in an ethical way. I'm going to look in the camera and say that in an ethical way. Because that's important. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, Latoya, for sitting with me. I love you so much. You know, I think I you're love you too. Thank you for having amazing. me. And me, you and Laura, we are going to get together and do something. The three of us. I don't know what yet, but we'll make it political, but we'll make it fun as well. And um, what I'm going to do for that episode, episode, I'm going to let them dress me because when I tell you these, these girls, they be putting that <laughs> shit on. These motherfuckers can dress. Okay. Oh, like, no, I, and I got some dressing ass friends. That's the thing. <laughs> I'll be over here in hoodies and like shorts half the time. No, y'all sweater today. Like, I like that. And listen. I need you to give me the deets. It's so cute. Yeah. These two can dress. So whatever episode we do, if y'all see me looking like something that I don't usually look like, is because I told them like, hey, put that shit on for me real quick. <laughs> What's up? Like <laughs> male plan, because I just was with Mel a couple weeks ago and she was flat to death. Man, so listen, stop playing with us. Listen, that was a suit I had to have tapered because I'm <laughs> only five four, goddammit. Can I say that about fashion? You know, a lot of people do compliment me about like what I wear. And I don't know if it's because they just don't normally see like plus size women, but it is so important to get a seamstress, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a personal tailor. Like the clothes just don't fit like this. Yeah. Like I go somewhere and I get it tailored to fit my body yeah. shape. It yeah. is so important. Yeah. That's a whole other conversation. Just a little tidbit I want to drop for y'all. We no, and maybe that'll be the thing, right? We'll do like politics and fashion or something. Mm-hmm. And like, cause I mean, we already know election night is a long one. Um, and so we're going to have plenty of time. <laughs> we, have, we have plenty of drinks, plenty of hookah and plenty of time to talk fashion. Um, so yeah, no, thank you for, for sitting with me. Um, y'all make sure y'all follow Latoya. Glamour One Dial on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm Latoya Henry. All that. And follow Dallas Weekly at Dallas Weekly. On Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. All All the the things. (laughs) All the things. Yeah. And y'all make sure y'all follow the green route. Follow me at I drink politics on all the things. Um, and y'all, thank you. Uh, appreciate y'all being with us at, with the delay. We had some delays. Oh, let's talk about the new space real quick. So we will be joining Sour Kids Productions in their, in their, um, studio space officially 
in this is episode four. So in six weeks. So our next eight week sprint will be um, in a new space. Um, Great Black Century, who y'all saw two weeks ago, is actually our new co-producer for this show. I'm super excited to work with him. So the two of us are going over um, tomorrow, actually, to meet with the people, figure out what we're going to do with that space. And it'll be amazing because now we will have the full setup um, with the full production team more space so we can have more guests um, and all of that. So I'm super excited just about like, I mean, I I would call it minimal growth, but for me, like, you know, building this a year ago from it's amazing this room right here and being able to actually get into an actual studio with a production team and an agency is just incredible. So, well, I hope after you rewatch, you'd be like, oh yeah, I want to bring Toya back. (laughs) I have a lot of fun. Listen, I'm a lot of fun. I don't know what you thought. Like, (laughs) I am the queen of reoccurring guests. I don't like, and what's crazy is so I used to go on um, my friend Avery. He has a show called um, Speak Between the Lines. I don't know. Avery, you need to bring Speak Between the Lines back. Let me point that out. But um, they used to do this uh, this poll to see which one of their guests would like, you know, rank higher as far as who should be reoccurring. And it was like, people want you back on. And so I love to see the feedback from the episodes because it lets me know what y'all fucking with. Mm -hmm. It lets me know who was giving good insight, who was giving good information. So I am, I'm all, all for Latoya coming back. Number one, because like I love her to death and we have amazing conversations, but also because she adds amazing insight. And the whole goal of this show is to not only entertain and engage y'all, but to inform and educate our people about what's going on in this country and in the world. So 100% 100% will be back. Me, you, and Laura will definitely... Laura, I hope you're watching. We will Laura, definitely... I love you. She's just so fly. It's just dumb. It's just crazy. Um, all right, and we're going to get out of here, y'all. So y'all have a great night, and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. What up, dog? <laughs> I ain't never seen her wrap her hood <laughs> dance. Oh, I, I love it. wouldn't be enough, and they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge.